Yo, it's DB. And you go, Serena. And welcome to Book Smart Street Smart Punjab edition. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> Today we are joined by the beautiful Ganesh Desand. She's an influencer, she's an entrepreneur, and she's got OnlyFans. And in this podcast, we're finally put into rest all of her past relationship rumors and her new marriage. We're also going to be discussing her OnlyFans and what her husband really thinks. And we're going to be talking about her brand new clothing line launching this year. So you know what to do. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Okay, Serena, you know what time it is now. Let's, Let's roll, roll the intro. intro. Okay, we know the audio quality is not quite the best with this one. We could have done better, we hold our hands up, but it's absolutely amazing. This podcast is the best we've ever done. So make sure you stay all the way to the end. And the end has a little surprise for you as well. <laughs> we have a special guest in the building. Someone all the way here from Vancouver, Canada. The one, the only, the beautiful, Gurneet the Sun. Aww, Lynch. hi guys. And how, how brilliant is it? We're, we're in my favorite place in the world. We're in Punjab, India, and we're recording a podcast. I never thought we'd be able to make it happen. We got the munjas out. We got it's the perfect. Jada couple got the best squad. <laughs> we got the beady. We have the vibes going on here. <laughs> we got the vibes. We got the vibes. Basically. If you're listening on audio right now, you need to make sure you're watching it on YouTube because we've actually got as well your uh, mom's old. Because my nanny's beady. Seriously, she's about sixty years old. She got it at her wedding. And that's how old it is. So you need to check it out on YouTube. You need to see the, <laughs> you see the settings. The right setup. Now. Yeah, we took we took a while to do this. Yeah, it took a while. Need to stand, you've been on our list for so long for recording a podcast with. Just because I feel like you're a person who's got so much life experience and you talk so well as well. Yeah. So that's Aww. why we need to have you on here. Um, but I remember, Gunny, the first time I saw you was on Instagram. And this is when you had bleach blonde hair. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And you used to do all your mind videos, do you remember? I do. You used to wear your pajama suits to always look so good. I used to be like, who is this? Girl, she's so cool. Like it's, you were from Canada, but you were like tanned when Jumpy doing all these like like. It's videos. crazy because now when I look back at the hair, I'm like, oh my god, what was I doing? No, but I think cute. that's what like those Snapchat rants is what made me kind of blow up in a way. Snapchat rants. At, at back then, it was basically rants. I'm just. Yeah. Uh, I would just like talk about things that like I was going through, and then somehow people related, and I was like, okay. But I think and that's the, how you you grew, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I want to say I'm honored that you guys. I've been on your list for so long. Oh. This is awesome. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's kind of where it started from the Snapchats. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like Gunith, so um, you're you're somebody who's not afraid to voice your opinion, and that's how you grew because you came from this girl who's just doing these voiceover right. videos, and then you started doing your like Snapchat rants. You talk about like your lifestyle, family stuff, friendships that have broken down. Um, anxiety, mm -hmm. mental health, and I feel like so many people connected with you. Right. But I think what would be really good to start, Gunith, is to kind of take us back a little bit and talk about, you know, how did you become the Gunith you are today? Tell us about your journey, your childhood. What was that like for you? Um, my childhood was actually, I had a good childhood. I grew up with my aunt, my uncle, and my mom, and they were all single parents. Like, my dad had just passed away, and then my, that's okay. How um, old is he? I was seven months old when it happened. Yeah, I was really young, so I didn't really get to know him, but I kind of like fished through my whole life trying to like find little pieces and like, kind of like, it's like a puzzle that I try to put together of yeah. my dad to see like who he is. But, um, and then my Masi was with um, me as well and she had just gone through a separation at that time. And then my mama was with us who was um, going through a divorce. So it was just wow. them three with their three, like they all had one kid each, so three of us cousins, and my nani nana. So we had like a tiny house in Vancouver, like my mom guys had just probably moved there like a few years before that. So we're all just like growing up and it was it was amazing. I had a great time growing up. Like vibe, right? It was, and then we all kind of grew apart. Everyone kind of started doing their own thing. Everyone wanted to build their own houses. And yeah, so we're, we still connect, but it's it's a little different now. It's, it's not the same. So how did you go from Growing up in a simple house in Vancouver, how did that how did that manifest into you becoming Gurney the Sun, the uh, influencer slash you know, entrepreneur that you are today? I think growing up, I was very isolated. Like in elementary school, I probably had like one friend, and if she wasn't there, I was just like alone during lunchtime. And yeah, and even in high school, I moved schools a lot. I moved about twice, 
Um, and the first time I moved was after three years of one high school. And there I had friends, but I could, tr I just never felt like I could connect because I think in high school, we're not really ourselves. I think no one really is. So it was hard for me to fit in. And then I moved schools the second time and then the third time. And that's when it was hard to like even keep up with friends at that point. So I spent a lot of my time in the library eating my lunch. Um, but I think by being alone, when I started gaining a little bit of confidence after grade 12, I started just going on social media, talking about things that like, I feel like there's, there's no, no way, way that it was just me that went through that. There's no way that I was the only one that had a hard time fitting in and whatnot. And when I started doing that, I realized that there's a lot of people that actually felt the same. Like they just never fit in. So I think that's where it started from. And then as time went by, I started doing a few music videos and then um, kind of, I was always connected to our Punjabi culture. Um, I was always into like designing suits and whatnot. So I just started focusing on that. But I did do um, a nursing program for about two and a half years. I did my LPN. I don't know what you guys call it in England. It'd just be like a nursing degree, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, because like we have LPN, then we have RN. RN is a degree, whereas an LPN is a diploma. Oh, okay. You oh, VTech. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So I did LPN. I mean, VTech's like an inside British joke. Oh, oh okay. yeah, like you say VTech, like a little... always say VTech if it's like the second grade or something. So if something's like, like a Rolls Royce, and like something the copy of a Rolls Royce. Oh, so you're kind of like, yeah. like VTech. I mean, uh... <laughs> no, I, I think it makes sense. <laughs> no, so I did LPN because um, in Vancouver, nursing was probably the hardest program to get into. Like, there's a four or five year wait list. And I'm like, I don't want to waste time just waiting. So I went to a private college, got my LPN. The goal was to do my RN. But by the time I got my LPN, I realized like this isn't my dream. Like it's amazing helping people. And that's kind of why I started it. But I wasn't as connected to it. Like I would probably still work as an LPN if I kind of wanted to, maybe in, in the future. But when I started doing these music videos and just going on social media, YouTubing and um, designing suits, I realized that's where my true passion is. And that's kind of what brought me here. Yeah. So you just realized, probably similar to me actually, like, yeah. you enjoy the creativity side. Because I was at uni when I got onto like social media and stuff. And I think you realize there's so much more to life than just like, oh, there, there she's getting comfy. <laughs> <laughs> she's getting comfy. She took her shoes I was off. like, I am not comfortable she like that. The <laughs> you do this thing, Gani has just got comfy. <laughs> True for I got comfortable. Real talk now. Yeah, it's um, about to get real. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, I think you realize when you start doing all of that and connecting with people, you just think, well, why am I going to just stick in this kind of box I've put myself in doing yeah. this degree and doing a job when you can do something much more fun where you can connect with people and be yeah. a lot more creative like you are. Exactly. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was scary though because I knew that there was expectations from like my family. Like my mom, not so much, but she would hear from like a lot of our aunts and uncles kind of like, oh, well, she's not going to become anything. It's a fashion, like she likes more fashion stuff and whatnot. She's never going to be like educated and do all that. And like I heard that probably throughout my entire high school years. So I was like pressured. I was kind of like, I have to do my LPN and then I'll do my RN and just to say I did it. But I, my heart wasn't in it. Would so, your aunts and uncles, would they... Um, aunts and uncles? So what <laughs> I'm listening to uh, these Canadians. Would your aunts and uncles do that and then... <laughs> you say ads and oh come on thank you i've never i've never heard you say that family i guess but then that just came out of nowhere <laughs> yeah, anyway you are to the course should i say um would that influence your mom's like she never made me realize that like it even affected her but i think deep down she was kind of like why are they saying all this to me like what why is it that their children can you know achieve all these things but mine can't but she never made me feel like that. Like, to be honest, ever since my dad passed away, my mom's, the only goal she had was to make me happy. Mm. So I did grow up, like, quite spoiled, and she would kind of get me everything. And... Oh, I can't tell, by the way. I would come home, and, like, she, she would come home from work, and she worked at the airport. And my mom actually just worked at a food cart where she was just, like, cleaning tables and, like, you know, that kind of stuff. And she there was a uh, Tim Hortons next to her work, so she would come home with ice caps every single day. Oh, wow. So... I don't know, for those that do follow me, you guys don't have the ice cap addiction, and that starts from my mom, but... So your mom got you addicted to caffeine? Yeah, she did. Yeah, <laughs> since nice I, job, yeah, <laughs> I don't think Punjabi moms <laughs> know, <laughs> like, yeah. that caffeine is, like, not... They're giving, like, like cups to, like, two-year-olds. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, so I, I think she didn't... Um, I think she was affected a little bit, kind of like, why are they saying that? But now, at this point, like, I help my family a lot with a lot of things, and I think they're kind of like, you know what? I'm glad, like, we let her do her thing because mm. 
yeah, I mean, I'm sure like there's a lot of people saying a lot of things and whatnot, but as long as like my family, my husband, my best friends, like my people are in my corner, mm. there's really nothing more I need, you know? Mm. Yeah. So when you were like doing your nursing stuff and you realized you didn't want to kind of do it all and you wanted to pursue the influence thing, yeah. like how did that transition happen? Because I know some people are in positions where they're in full-time jobs and they're like, oh, you know, how can I just leave this where you're in a stable financial position to go and start influencing and you know how old was you when that all started happening because was it a, a time where you could start making money from social media like talk to us a little bit about that yeah. so I started um kind of hopping on social media and at that time influencers wasn't really a thing there's probably like two or three like if, this was a long time ago I'm talking about like 2012 2011 oh so ages that's a 10 years ago yeah it's a long time ago. So they say, so, years, they say, they say ten years to build an overnight Yeah, year. yeah, and it was crazy, and I was like, oh, there's not much. So I was scared to like hop on, but I was in my nursing school around 2013, and that's when I really started like doing little Snapchat rants, where I just I just get annoyed at people, and I was like, there has to be somebody that understands what I'm feeling, and I'd go on Snapchat and be like, oh my god, like this happened, that happened, <laughs> and then I would get all these responses, and all of a sudden I started getting these followers, and then. Um, I don't know if you guys remember back then, I used to like do these lip syncing videos. Yeah, that was <laughs> the one you were talking about, the mind videos. Yeah. Uh, it's so cringy, but what yeah. Was that what was that? What app did you used to use? Just Instagram. Did you do lip sync on Instagram? Instagram with the, with and the music Snapchat in the background. And Snapchat, oh, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the way you used like, to do it back like, then. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about like uh, musically. And like dub smash that. and all so that stuff. Just on Instagram. I just did it because I. You were the founder of TikTok. I think musically was. Around. Probably around, yeah. yeah. I around. But I, I, I wasn't really um, into all those apps. Right. I was just on Snapchat and Instagram. Yeah. And then all these artists would like repost me on their pages and stories. And that's how I started getting a little bit of music videos and whatnot. But so tell us about the music videos, because I remember I'm a massive fan of Prophecy, and she was in a Prophecy music that video. That was probably the best. That but, was a um, beautiful video. What song was it? Kinnachar. Kinnachar. I, I love that song. I think it's his most played song, which I was like surprised at. But oh, I was looking at Spotify and YouTube. It's his most played song. I was like, oh my god. But, you um, look so different in that video now, yeah, though. Yeah, I after that I got my nose done, and that <laughs> completely changed my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's why. But um, Kinnachar was the best video I did. But I did have a hard time with it because the pr one of the people that I was working with in that music video was just very like against a woman in a way or at least against me like he was very rude the way he would call me over and n not prophecy not his family not his people but just somebody that was involved in this project was just probably the rudest person I've ever worked with so that how so and are they someone who get a quite prominent in the industry yeah it has yeah. like this guy has been exposed director, could say yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. say I mean honestly why, I, I why do we keep those things like silent that, yeah. though no, but it's we true. It to me, it's like, I don't want to make this podcast bash somebody, that, right? Yeah. But, but the thing is, like, he the way he would talk to me and the girls and, like, just oh, everyone was just so rude. But with Prophecy, of course, he was amazing. Yeah. But with me, he was just so rude. Like, how so? Like, how do you mean? Like, give us some like, like, The way he would example. call me and, like, the, there was no respect would it be like, he would talk. Like, yeah, kind yeah, of thing. like, kurie, kurie, yeah. Idara. Um, like, just so rude. Like, where you don't feel comfortable. Like, you don't want to be in front of camera. So after that, I kind of did slow down. I didn't want to do videos anymore. How did you find the whole, like, music video experience? Because, you know, for, for girls, I feel like girls get bashed a lot, don't they, for doing they do. music videos. Yeah. It's yeah. always like, oh, she's doing a music girl, video. Like, you can see a girl like, constantly on different music. Which is so shitty because yeah. it's like, she's doing what she likes, like it's fine. Especially when you see videos like Gimna Chair, they're such sweet, romantic videos. Like, would you think that doing? behind it would be like that? But yeah. um, overall, I think the experience was good because Prophecy, um, his name is Neil actually. Neil and his dad were so sweet, like they made me feel so comfortable. And then his manager was his cousin at the time. And his, <laughs> <I'm looking up. laughs> and his cousin was so nice and he was the one that actually asked me to do the video. And this uh, person that we were just talking about actually told them, oh, you can't get Granit in this video. Like, we don't want you to. Why? Really? I don't know. And then they were like, no, but we, we want her. So a big shout out to Neil. <laughs> shout out like, to Prophecy, we love you. Yeah, and his <laughs> manager who like, yeah. Serena's put me on to Prophecy, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, He's boy, amazing. He was too senti for me before, but now. He's become a senti for now. <laughs> We singer. could do that to men. I'm like the Indian Drake. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting all bare emotional. But our um, engagement proposal video was done to... Um, Prophecy uh, says. Yeah, I know. I loved yeah. it. It was beautiful. Okay, so where did you go? So after you kind of slowed down with the music videos um, and you've still got your social media growing at this point, I guess? Yeah, I did one video um, just last year oh, with G. Sidhu called Crop Top. It, 
it's a pretty good video. Like I, I love the way I look in it, yeah. and the experience was the opposite of last time. Cool. Like the director was so sweet. His name is Anmol. He was just amazing. The whole team was great. So that was it's crazy. I think you could really make it or break it yeah. with how you feel about music videos with the people you work with. True. So yeah. is that how you started making money then? Like was it through the music videos? Was it through like social media campaigns, like clothing promotions? Like how did that start yeah, like, making so money wise? I was already working. So when I was doing my nursing, I was working three jobs, which is <laughs> crazy. Yeah. But I was working as um, a sales representative uh, for Sunglass Hut at a mall. Oh, no way. Yeah, and then I was also working um, at a restaurant in the evenings, um, and then another restaurant, which is at the airport. Damn, so, you're a hustler. Yeah, so during nursing, I was. Girl? I don't know how I like passed my exams and then still be working that many jobs, but right after nursing, I tried to find jobs. It was very hard at that time because like the demand was not as high as I thought it would be by the time like we graduated. And then I did work casual, mm. so it gets a little personal here, but basically... Um, when I was at work this one day, I, I finally started getting all these shifts. Like I was getting almost about, I was, I'm almost about to be full time from casual and I was doing night shifts. My shifts were about 11 p.m. till I think 7 a.m. And I was uh, doing a night shift and I got a phone call and it was actually from my past. Um, a really bad accident had, you know, happened and whatnot. So I had to like leave my job right away and they couldn't like, they couldn't hold that spot for me for very long. And during that time I was gone, it was about three, four months. I think that's when those three, four months is when my life completely changed. Like I realized like, you know what? I don't want to do this. I don't want to work as a nurse. And that's when I started making more money off social media, like more uh, sales stuff okay. and, you know, like advertisements. Yeah. Um, but it was hard because you don't make money right away. No. It's, it's very slow. Yeah. What year? 2019. Oh, so very recent. Yeah. As when you say, also over 2019, he was working all these jobs. So like, yeah. No way. So you wouldn't have guessed. Hold on a minute. So obviously, because you're on about, because you started social media 2012, like 2011, like there was no roadmap then. There was no body making no. money that you could say, okay, you can make money from this. You're just doing it just for like your own pleasure. Just like, to, yeah, like, yeah. That kind of thing. I just enjoyed it. But you never really, at that point, you didn't see it as a career, did you do that? No. Okay, so it's only until 2019. I never really saw That's it as a That's actually really interesting. I like I never wanted to be an influencer. Like I like when I first started posting, it was never like I there was no such thing as influencer back then. Yeah. And it was like even when you did start noticing all these influencers, you're kinda like, Well, that's a far reach. Like, you know, yeah. they're lucky or whatever, right? Or or they're famous. That's probably why they have so many followers, whatnot. But I never wanted to be an influencer. I always wanted to be a Indian clothing designer. Like since that I was, was always the dream. Always. Like since I was ten, I was always like, once I start making money from my nursing, I'm gonna start putting money into clothes and start doing that. Cause yeah. every party I'd go to, like and I'm not kidding, I'm not saying this just to say it. Like every party I'd go to, everyone's like, Where did you get your suits from? And I was like, Oh, me and my mom just designed them. Like we sit there, we plan things out and then we call like our embroidery guy and whatnot, manufacturing, we just tell Sweet. them like, Hey, we wanna get this made. Wow. Yeah. yeah the pieces. So yeah. is that what? You know, when you was working in three jobs for your nursing degree, is that what was, um, like... The plan. The no. plan, yeah. The dream. Is that what was motivating you? 100%. Because you knew always. you were use that money to invest. I just knew I didn't want to work for someone. Okay. Like, that's something I just, I've always known. Like, I always wanted to work for myself. Because mm. the freedom and, like, n I started noticing a lot of people doing it. Like, I have a bunch of uh, family members that actually have their own businesses. Mm. And the freedom that comes with it and, like, how they get to call their own shots and whatnot. I was like, mm. this is something that I want because I knew I loved traveling. I loved to like, you know, be everywhere. And you can't do that when you're working for someone. Yeah, it's true. You don't have that flexibility, do you? No. But I think it's really cool to know that about you, Bernice, because considering how long you've been on social media for, it's important for people to know that if you're trying to grow yourself on social media to get right. to a point where you can be, you know, like self-employed and doing your own thing, it takes years. Like, look how many years you was doing what you were doing for. And yeah. only in 2019, which is what? We're in 2023 now. How many years? Can that you believe three? it? We're in 2023. <laughs> and when it's in lockdown as well. So you've got to factor that in oh, too. Oh, that was just a hard time. I don't know how it was for you guys, but yeah, yeah those two years yeah. felt like the slowest two years. I was in America at that time and oh, okay, yeah. just not, not the not vibes. Not good times. No. Yeah. No, it is difficult, yeah. Especially when you're, when you've made that transition to just becoming self-employed or like just becoming working for yourself right you haven't really got a plan as such Ooh. and then all of a sudden the whole world locks down it's like oh shit what am I doing? yeah yeah where's the money gonna come from whatnot. yeah so on the side of obviously like all your influencing stuff um we have to obviously touch on only fans yeah a lot of people <laughs> know who's the only fans 
a shout out. <laughs> I think you're the only Punjabi girl that I know. No, there's, no, there's a few now. No, but that I know. I know there's a few now, oh, but right. that I know. Personally. You're, yeah, you're the only one I know. Yeah. Which right. is super cool because you don't see anyone really <laughs> doing it, do you? Mucky <laughs> <laughs> I love the nakara. So Sorry. <laughs> there's so many mucky out today. Like a music video again. Like are you watching a prophecy music video yeah, again? Yeah. <laughs> With Goody from the uh, Wonder. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you though. No, yeah. that's fine. Um, so obviously you started your OnlyFans account. Yeah. So talk to us about OnlyFans because I think people are going to be dying to know yeah, about I, that. I think people have been wanting me to speak up on it. And I remember telling Serena, like, if I go on your podcast, that's the time I'll, whenever that happens, that's when I'll talk about it. Um, go on, go, we're sitting here comfy now. You, you <laughs> can just go ahead now. <laughs> I decided to do OnlyFans two years ago in September. I had just stopped working one of my nursing jobs because I, I went after, um, in 2019, after I stopped working as a nurse, I started working again for about maybe like seven months at a pharmacy where I would like deliver medicine and administer medicine, go to people's houses. So I was always like on the road. And this one day I was at this apartment building and I was so scared to go in it because I had some clients and patients that just, um, it wasn't safe to be around them, yeah. like all the time. So I, I was just really scared. And I remember I came home and I just started crying. I was like, I don't want to work here anymore. I don't want to do this. I would dread it every day. Yeah. And I was like, this isn't for me. I'm just doing it because, you know, I've I got to do my RN and I got to, that was still the plan. And I was like, oh, I got to do my, you know, company and whatnot for clothing. So I came home one day and my cousin goes, why don't you do OnlyFans? And I was like, no way. Like everyone's going to be like, what is wrong with you? You know? And she's like, no, Kuni, it's really not that bad. And I'm like, what do you mean not that bad? Like, isn't you don't you have to be nude and don't you have to like do sexual acts and whatnot on it? And she's like, no. Like, I know girls that are just in lingerie and swimwear and they do like cute, sexy pictures and people buy them. And I'm like, who the hell is going to want to buy that? Yeah. You know, like, and at that time I used to post like bathing suit pictures on Instagram and whatnot. So I was like, there's no way. And she was just try it. And I was like, but I need to talk to my mom and dad because if they hear it from a third person, it's going to be, you know, weird. So... I come home and I'm like, I tell my mom, I'm like, mom, there's this website where people actually do more than just like lingerie and whatnot, but I'm only gonna do like lingerie pictures. And like, I showed her the pictures I've already taken, swimsuit pictures. And she's like, okay, she's like, don't you post this kind of stuff? I'm like, yeah, but I might do a little more, you know, like a little, <laughs> little close up shots of certain things. And she's like, okay. She's like, um, are you even gonna make money off this? Cause you know, What's people are gonna be then? talking shit. Like that's the first thing she said. So I'm like, let's try it for a day. And I'll tell you, but you're okay with it. One She's day. like, yeah, one day. Okay. And I tried it for one day. And I was like, okay, I made more than I make in a month in one day. No. Sure. I'm not kidding. And I was like. Well, how, how did you even um, promote it through your, your own? Through Instagram. No. Yeah, I would just say link in bio because at that time, Instagram was very sensitive. They would just like block everything just get my phone. I'm it. sitting at only fans of pussy. <laughs> <laughs> So hard, <laughs> no, and in the first month, I'm serious. The first month, I made more than I make the entire year. The the first month, and I was like, "What? Like, what is no, going on?" No looking back so of course, my mom and dad are like, "Oh, you're gonna call I would do like I would do feet pics, and my mossy would be like, "Maybe be bad on the because they were just. But honestly, my family is pretty cool. Like, they're pretty open. They're not that's, very, like... That's not even just pretty cool. I think that's, like, that's cool. super yeah. cool. Of I, course, like, if it was more than just, like, yeah. pictures and if I was, like, actually, like, doing some sexual acts and whatnot, of course, my family would, like, abandon me and be like, what's yeah. wrong with you? But because of the things I do, they're not, like, not yeah. used to some people. But I think people that haven't seen my stuff, they have this image of like you know this vision like this girl is a slut and i don't know if am i allowed to swear yeah I'm oh. like, can i just say this poor man here gets so much hate for how much he swears <laughs> he swears so much you do like, you do no like, d you oh, swear no, a lot okay well i always need to stop swearing oh he ruined the podcast we need to get rid of the bell go with the no bell. we can't get rid of d what's wrong with you guys <laughs> <laughs> Even, but you know what? what? You guys probably noticed that after your podcast, you probably have a lot more haters. Oh like, my yeah, gosh. Yeah, yeah. Because no matter what, when you start living in your like true um, a self, true yeah, self yeah. what you're meant to do you're here, projecting you're, yourself, people you're going, are people are going to hate it because they yeah. can't do it or they're not yeah. there yet. And yeah. I hope all of you guys get there because yeah, it's yeah. the best. I think maybe you people know? have just seen Filter TV for so long that now That's people are putting true. these raw, authentic podcasts out. 
yeah. everyone getting shocked by it. They're but not even, ready to hear it. But no. even me, I Thanks said to social him, media. Yeah, I said to him, I'm like, come on, dude, like maybe you should just stop swearing because like people not liking it. And he's like, no. no. He's like, I'm not. He's like, I'm just going to be me. So I've just thought, you know what? You just do you then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You just can't, like, you can't make anyone happy. Like, yeah. yeah, okay, you know what? There's more lovers than haters. Yeah. Like, if you really look at your hate comments and look at the views and likes, yeah, yeah, you're gonna be views. like, okay. And that's the best way to, like, kind of, like, make that's yourself it. feel better when, you know, they try to put you down. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But if you just don't look at any of it, so if, you, if, you get, if you're getting gassed off the likes and the views constantly, right. that means that when someone does post a hate comment or post a comment that's negative, yeah. you're gonna get more affected by it because you're getting gassed by the likes. If you just don't let the likes affect you, don't let the views affect you, don't let the hate affect you, don't let the good or the bad affect you, yeah. just keep doing what you're doing. You have to. Then you're, you're, you can progress, but if you're right. just gonna only do the likes and you're gonna become a machine for the likes, you know what I mean? So you just gotta do what you gotta do for yourself. And the thing is that won't last for very long when you just try to make everyone else happy because yeah. you're not doing it for you exactly. anymore. And you'll burn out and stuff. Exactly. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. So you've been authentically yourself. She it's has. Been it's been hard. Been. Well, that's what you. It's can been say. hard. Um, it's hard. The amount of times that they have tried to tear me down. Like yeah. I have so many messages. I think now I finally deleted them. But I have so many messages. That, like, oh my god, they were just awful. Like, oh, um, this is what happens when your dad dies, or like. Oh yeah. Yeah, or like I oh. Oh, your first marriage didn't work out, and that's why you're probably never going to get married. Oh, your husband doesn't show his face because he's embarrassed of um, what you do. Okay. And it's like, really? <laughs> like, you guys have met my husband. Yeah, yeah. Really? May, can we just say, shout out to your husband. <laughs> we were so excited to meet him because obviously we've got to know you a little bit. And it's right. always really interesting when you meet someone you Their know. Their partner. partner. Because you're like, oh, I wonder yeah. what kind of person that person will be, who have they picked. Right. Then we met him. And we were like, this guy's so sound. sound. Like, literally, them two have had a massive romance. We've fully <laughs> enjoyed his that. company. <laughs> He's actually here right now, too, he in the corner up. of the room. <laughs> He's honestly the sweetest guy ever, and you guys make oh. the best couple. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Like, Fuck you. Uh, you be happy. No, no. Let's ruin it. Let's I, that's it. what people do, and yeah. it's crazy because, like, he doesn't like social media. It's not, it's not his thing. Like, no. I tell him, like, maybe one day you should, like, you know? Come on, so he's like, I'll think about it. Like, it's not that I. He'd like, be wicked. Can I just say he's so good at the couple right. as well, isn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah, he helps with the couple. Exclusive a lot. about to happen. The when your husband finally reveals himself, it's gonna be right in it on our. On the podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're okay. We can give you guys <laughs> that. <laughs> it's funny because like um I have this Patreon account with all my wedding details oh, in yeah. it because like I didn't want everyone to see it. It's like mm. people are just gonna hate, and I know a lot of people are like messaging me and being like, oh. You're such a bitch for trying to make money off of it. It's like, it's my wedding. I can do whatever yeah, I want. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. and it's not that I'm trying to make money off. It's just like... It's clever to hustle. Why not? That too. And also, like, there's so much content, so much inspiration, so many things. And I don't want just everyone to have it because some of you guys aren't even happy. So people that are actually going to pay is because they genuinely care. They genuinely want to be there. And the little group we have on Patreon is so beautiful. It's all these little, like, girls, all these amazing girls. Like, they're just beautiful. The messages they send me, you could just, like sense their aura it's amazing and yeah. that's where i actually revealed his face a couple of times and oh, wow. you know because you want to see gurney's husband's face <laughs> you know where to go <laughs> God, the face even there it's very <laughs> like less he's not like he'll be in a few pictures and whatnot but um i was like we should do youtube together we should do this together you guys like, would be so good at it i'm here for it. maybe we should do a podcast <laughs> where you just hear his voice right no one knows why he looks we fine. talked about that you yeah. think maybe yeah. and his punjabi is so good i was like you could do the punjabi part and yeah. i could yeah. do it like you know well your punjabi is punjabi good as well yeah, but his Punjabi is way better. So, how, uh, so have you found that um, good success with that? Because when we did a bit of research, we, we did find your uh, Patreon for your um, your wedding. And yeah, you it's, it's pretty good. It's not yeah. like, of course, it's not like OnlyFans. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like that level. Yeah. But it's a nice side income. It's a nice little, like, you know, thing it's coming in. Income. And I keep yeah. posting, like, stuff and, you know. You yeah. know what I still can't get over, right? It just blows my mind how chilled your family are. Because <laughs> even my family are, are chilled. But I, mm -hmm. I still feel like if I turned around to them and I was like, I'm gonna do OnlyFans. Right. Like, they would not be happy about it. No. No, they wouldn't. I mean, I'm not surprised because it's such a big like uh, taboo around the yeah. subject. Like, I'm sorry, I'm just getting uncomfortable sitting down. My legs are sleeping. Yeah. But <laughs> um, it, it, like, people see OnlyFans as almost like, like you know, those websites. Like, that, like page yeah. three. It's see it as porn, like, basically. Yeah, yeah, that's how people see it. But it's yeah. really not. Like nowadays, people have like their makeup on there. They have like food, their like recipes and whatnot. So it's really changing. But 
I'm, I guess I'm in the middle. <laughs> well, only fans uh. can be anything on it. Like You could do anything on it. It's got a stigma attached to it because of what people do on there. Yeah. It's like TikTok. TikTok had a stigma that only 12 people could be on it, but now nah, everyone's yeah. on it. It's just a stigma, isn't it? So you only, could do anything on OnlyFans. Yeah, you could do, like, like, any, like, literally anything. It's just a place where you sell yeah. um, subscriptions. Yeah. Have you ever had a day or any fans anymore? Yeah. I have. Because recently? recently, like oh. three weeks ago, okay. to be honest, this guy made a TikTok video about me, Jyoti K, like oh, a bunch she, of us. Oh, shout out to you. His... We love Jyoti K. Me too. I, yeah. Jyoti, if you're watching this, we love you. Like, yeah. She's one of the most amazing women I've ever met. Such yeah. free spirited, sets, sets people the way they should be set. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he I did this like. Oh, <laughs> the more, best. More like Ted than any guy I've ever Yeah. Like, Oh, I actually want to pay her. I'd pay her an OnlyFans. Yeah, oh my god, I honestly, I think I'll me too. I'll give her $100, I'll say, well, no, I got it. Yeah. And, and she'd be like, thank you. <laughs> no, but like, she's great because she just says things as they yeah. should be said. Like, yeah. she's not afraid to like, stand up for herself, which is hard these days. But, um, what were we just talking about? Uh, have you, uh, about a day or a moment where you've been like, you know what, I don't want oh, to do yeah, this Oh yeah, so this guy, he covered his face and he talked about, um, a bunch of us, like there's so many girls, and he's like, ah, oh, need this hundred, I need to come look at me, this, that. And when I saw it, the, immediately I was like, I have a really big family. Of course, my immediate family's okay with it, but like, yeah, they probably know what I do, but they probably don't know the extent. Like the way this guy is telling them in Punjabi, I'm like, oh, my nana is gonna find out he doesn't be deep. But I feel like that day, I like, I honestly was tears. Like this guy made me cry, and there's not a lot of people that can make me cry. And I went up to my husband, and I'm like. Face. And I showed him the video, and he's like, "You fuck this guy! I can't even show his face." And I'm like, "I know, but I'm just like, like, how much hatred can you have to sit there and talk about somebody, right?" And then like that night, he made me feel better. Whenever he's like, "You're gonna cry it out tonight. And you're never gonna let it bother you again." And that's exactly what happened. I never let it bother me again. And then two days later, I see Jyoti cussing this guy out, exposing him, and I'm like, "Okay, there you go. Like, that helps." He, he's been like he's been doing this for years. Like, this guy. Yeah, this person. Yeah. He's been doing um yeah. like slating. With I didn't know, you know it was him. Yeah. I don't even want to say his name either because we don't even want to give him the attention mm -hmm. that he wants. It's not even worth it. Um, the whole day, uh, your husband for not letting that money go to waste. <laughs> 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 no, actually, we got more subscribers that month because he basically promoted me. Yeah, right? well, there you for go. For people that didn't even know, like they're like, oh. Yeah. So I made a lot of money that month, okay. but it was, it was still hurtful because it's yeah. like, so There's still people it. out there with like so much hatred. Like I didn't think that there was. I could never sit here and talk about anybody. I don't care. Yeah, because I started going through the comments. Yeah. Like, whoa. like oh, the yeah. amount of people who normally vibrate people. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, even now, we was chilling together in what a few a week or so ago. Yeah. We go together and I put them on my um on my stories. I'm into stories. I got people that I know. I'm acquainted with. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Well done, you're doing good there. Yeah. Great word there, book smart. <laughs> I'm learning from the book smart art street. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so people I'm acquainted with, there's like messages be like, oh, I can't take you seriously if you roll with her. Like, yeah. put, you put in your name and stuff like that. That makes me so And mad. then she tags me again a couple of days later because he's oh. like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I was hitting her back like, why? Like, you can't take her seriously. She's making more than you, bro. And uh, he's like, oh, ha, ha. I didn't mean it as a joke. I didn't mean Oh, that's what happens when you call people out, yeah, right? But yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, there's going to be people that are, are going to hate like, what I do. I get it. It's, it's not something that every, like, I, the amount of people that I've heard, like, my boyfriend would let, never let me do that. And that's okay. Like, yeah. that's something that you wouldn't want to do it yourself anyway. And if you do want to do that and your boyfriend doesn't let you, that's something that it's kind of like, I don't know, I guess compromise between you two. And that's totally okay. Like, if my man had a problem with what I do, he wouldn't give me a chance in the first place. Has I've your, been doing it before him, right? Has your husband ever looked at a photo that you've posted and been like, yo, that's a bit too much? Yes. Oh, he has. has. Okay, okay, so okay. So not our OnlyFans, which is funny, because he's like, you're making money off it, do your thing. Do your thing, But girl. there was like, one picture I posted from Mexico, and I was wearing like this orange. It's the first time he's ever said anything. He never says anything. And I, I was kind of like sitting like this, and I was wearing like a bikini. And I guess you kind of see like the sides of my crotch in a way, and he's just like, Babe, I feel like this is too much. And I was like, you think so? He's like, for Instagram, like, like people- like, You're not gonna make money from it. But yeah, and, he, and he's like, at least on OnlyFans, like you're making so much money off of it. And like, you, you get to hear people talk shit and whatnot, but like, at least you're building something, you know? 
you're building a foundation for what you want to do in life or not but like to post it for free and whatnot and you just like mm, I don't know I just don't like it and actually I didn't end up even posting that picture on OnlyFans because like if he doesn't like it and this is a guy that never complains about anything I ever do was like this is light like I I've been with someone who's controlling and like always telling me what I can do and what I can't wear. Like I wasn't even allowed to post a picture in a bikini. And I think that's a bit much for me. Like, cause to me it's like, it's my choice. And the way I'm raised with my family, we wear bikinis when we're on vacation, <coughs> beaches, whatnot. So to me it was like, it was weird. It was just like caught me off guard. But I knew that like when I was finally back in the, you know, business of like being with someone, I was like, I'm not gonna be with someone who's controlling. Mm -hmm. But um, I did have the OnlyFans talk with my husband right before we got married. Like, right when okay. we started liking each other. I was like, hey, you do know about my OnlyFans, right? And how? And he's been my best friend for seven, eight years. Um, so he, of course, he knew, but I was like, like, how do you feel about it? He's like, nothing. Like, I don't mind it. I was like, yeah. really? And then he's like, do you do nudes? And I was like, I'm not going to answer it here because you're going to have to subscribe. But, <laughs> 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 but I gave him the answer, and he's like, okay, I'm okay with that. Like, that's, that's cool. So, yeah. So, Touching on, obviously, you've just got married recently. Congratulations yeah, to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, but yeah. we know before, I, was, I don't know how many years ago, but you kind of were kind of married, but not because there was no Anand Garaj. So talk to us a little bit about that, because I feel like there's so many rumours flying around everywhere. Just yeah, put everyone are. straight. That's What's the situation? The haters. We put you straight. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so oh. um, I think it's good that we're addressing this for once and all, because like, I just hate talking about the past over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was legally married because the guy I was with was from America and I was from Canada. So when we started getting serious and we knew that we were gonna get married, we were trying to plan a wedding and whatnot, we thought, why don't we get legally married? And at that time, we went to um, a court in America, got legally married, just me and him and his mom. Um, but we super never, casual, low key super thing. Casual, like, no one even knew about it. It wasn't even like one of those things. We did have a YouTube channel back then, so I think at one point we did share that, oh, we legally got married, whatnot. But I think that was one of my biggest mistakes I made. Um, one, it was just so rushed. Two, like, what we showed in front of camera, it wasn't really what it was. Like, we were nothing like that. So that's when I realized, like, if I'm not my authentic self, like, I'm just never gonna grow. And that's when I started burning out from, like, myself, the relationship, whatnot, but, um, so, why I don't think it was like an actual marriage. Like I get a lot of messages being like, you were married before. Oh, now you have to find a second one because he didn't support your OnlyFans. Which is funny because I started my OnlyFans while I was with him, my ex. Yeah. So it's not that he didn't support it. He wasn't as lenient, he was still a bit controlling, but he kind of let me do my thing. Cause I was at that point where I was like, I don't, I want to do my thing. And I wasn't happy in the relationship. So it was kind of one of those things where it's like, I don't even want to compromise. I genuinely didn't like, I feel like for a man who I truly love, like for my husband, if today he tells me like, hey, this is something I'm not okay with, I would compromise. Yeah. But when, when you've been cheated on and you've been through so much with this one person and there's so much resentment, um, family issues, whatnot, you just, you just don't want to compromise anymore. You just want to live your life. You, you're almost okay with breaking up at that point, you know? Mm -hmm. So we never did the Nandgaraj because our Nandgaraj was supposed to be in the summertime, like a year and a half later after our actual like legal wedding. Um, our wedding is going to be then, and two months or a month before our um, scheduled wedding, he got in a really bad car accident and he Before was that you were meant to get there when you was working at the uh, yeah yeah so he was in a wheelchair so explain for a that while. when she was working at so the working as a nurse, was it as a uh, yeah just, that's when just i found become out full time, yeah. just, about to become, just become full time about to we be, had yeah. to leave he was that yes that was it right okay yeah so then um i during that time i stopped everything to go be there for him like and that's not when i started only fans way later on but um at that time i just stopped everything went to be there for him and this is where it gets a little interesting, but I had my bachelorette party planned. So we went to LA and it didn't end up being a bachelorette party because he was on like bed rest and it just didn't feel right. But me and my close friends and cousins went to LA. We just kind of like hung out at the beach, talked, cried, really. <laughs> and uh, right after that, I went straight back to him to see if he's okay. And one night he was sleeping and I just, I don't go through like people's phones, but you know, now I'm like, oh, uh, maybe I should. Cause that night I had this like gut feeling, I'm like, go through his phone. Girls like have a gut feeling. There's something, it's such a strong gut feeling. So I went through his phone, he's sleeping, and I saw these messages with the stripper. And the night of his accident, he was on the way to meet her. Oh my gosh. So here I am, gosh. quitting my entire life to like go be with somebody who was doing that. Um, he did have um, a bit of a problem at that time with like substance abuse, which I don't think is my story to share, so I'm just gonna stop right there. But it was just one of those things where I'm like, what am I doing? And after that, I still ended up being with him. But then it was just resentment because it was the second time I've been cheated on in the same relationship. Oh. So just resentment and 
you know, at points I wanted to get back at him. Like I would love, like you know, if a guy would come up to me and like if I was into him, I would kind of enjoy it because I felt like needed, loved, you know. Yeah. So that's when I realized, like, yo, I can't go on like this. This is so unhealthy and so it's toxic. End up like, yeah. It's, yeah, it became so toxic. So um, that's when I told him I'm starting an OnlyFans. He was okay with it, and then eventually I was like, I just can't do this. Then we gave it a chance. There was a lot of breakups and like, you know, and I ended up being in America for like six months and then. That's um, when he was. Uh, we lived together. We had like an apartment and whatnot. Okay. And then I came home because I called my mom and I was just so depressed. I was just really, really depressed in my relationship. I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel good. I lost so much weight. I was 82 pounds, which is crazy. And you're all, she's tiny now. I don't know what that is in kilos is. She's tiny now, Very so light. I can imagine. you just Very 82 pounds. Like, oops. It was just bad. And like, I don't want <laughs> I don't want to say that like it was all his fault. Like I'm sure I became a little toxic too because you know. When you're in that situation, that's what happens, isn't it? Because you're both trying to just get at each other. Yeah, and imagine like you know raising kids and all that. It's just not for me. And I called my mom crying, and I was like, Mom, like I'm so scared. I don't want to embarrass you guys. Like everyone knows about us. We're on YouTube, but I don't want to do this anymore. Like I just I can't. Like I'm gonna die here. And it was like December, uh, maybe it wasn't that long ago. It was actually a year ago. This happened when I came home. So I came home and I was like, so like, so oh, so over a year ago. Yeah, just over a year ago. ago. And I came home and when I was home, I was so upset. I was like, oh my God. And no one knew why. There's so many rumors and whatnot. And at that time, I went on live and I told them like my side of what happened. And you know, I was, that was in like the few followers, the social media, and it ended up blowing up that video. And I didn't know that it was going to, but somebody pre-recorded it and put it on YouTube. So oh it's still my on YouTube. Gosh. And it's me like crying hysterically and I'm just so upset in it. But I did end up telling the truth about like what his family did to me and everything, like every little detail of what happened. And there's a few things I didn't really mention, but there was just a bunch of stuff where I was like, I'm, I'm done. Like I, I don't owe your family or you respect. I don't owe you guys anything after what I just been through. I'm just done. So when I came back home, I lived my best single life for about four or five months. <laughs> <laughs> four or four or five months. <laughs> yeah, but I felt single for so long because I was so like isolated. And you, know? you were already like disengaged from the relationship. You'd already right. kind of ended it in your head yeah. mentally. Yeah. And my now husband, I was best friends with him for eight years or so. And it's crazy because- Man lived in that friend zone for a long time. Now <laughs> 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 that man. Beat that out. <laughs> he said his he name. Actually, oh, <laughs> shit. Sorry. I mentioned your name, but we've. Yeah. <laughs> he had a girlfriend. Uh, oh so my don't God. be Pachala, okay? Don't Pachala <laughs> him. But no, it's fine. He had a girlfriend. I. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying that nothing can be wrong with Granny's husband. Of He's course. always going to have Granny's husband. He's always. Back yeah, now. now D's always going to be like. <laughs> Royce no, for but, life. <laughs> but um, yeah, so he. Uh, we were like friends. Like, we both met each other's, like, you know, significant others at that time and whatnot. It was like. But I feel like there was always something there. Mm -hmm. Like, if I'm being honest, I think, like, I always thought he was cute. I always thought he was charming. And all my cousins and friends would tease me, like, you and him definitely have something going on. I'm like, dude, I'm in a relationship. And he's in a relationship. And they'd be like, nah, there's something there. So I think, like, the, the storyline of, like, the universe was always me and him. It just took us so long to, like, to finally like, figure yeah. out. Yeah, and then he had to go through like massive life changes and whatnot. And then um, he got his heart broken. I'm sitting here with the heart broken. And I came to India to start my line. And I tell him that I'm here and he's like- So this is your clothing line, yeah? You came to India line. to start your clothing line yeah. in March, was in it March. last year? So finally yeah, after all these years of planning it. Finally, I was like, you know what? I'm making all this money on OnlyFans. It's like, I, I was kind of getting scared, right? Because it's two years of making money and I'm still not doing anything. And I'm like, it's obviously fear. So I was like, I'm just gonna, you know what? Now that I got my heart broken, I, I have nothing else to lose. Cause I had like sold everything before I went to America. So I had nothing. At that point I was just like, I have nothing. So let me just start something. So I went to India in March and my husband was really, really good friends with my mom. As crazy as that sounds. Like, what well, do you want to tell the story of how? Because that's so yeah, cute. Yeah. Okay, stay because I love it's that story. It's my favorite story. story. I love it too. I'm like, oh, how cute is that? <laughs> but um, at that time, he was working at a gas station, and my mom uh, would always go to that gas station because it's like the closest one to our house. And he would he would always be there. And I guess just the way he spoke to my mom, she was just like, this guy. Oh my, like she just had a soft spot for him. So after a while of her knowing him, she would come home and she'd be like, oh, there's this guy. There's actually two guys at the gas station, but this one guy. Like I just. I feel so bad for him. His parents are so far away because his parents were in India. And she, she's like, oh, I just have a soft spot for him. Whenever, like, you know, it's cold, if you can just grab him coffee or something, just drop it off. I probably did it once. But I was like, mom, <laughs> like, come on. Because my mom is a very welcoming person. Like, yeah. 
for anyone that knows my mom, it's crazy. Like she has the biggest heart. She's always very like open, welcoming. Our doors are always unlocked to guests. Like it's just one of those things. I can just imagine though, the way you are, like how your mom is. <laughs> obviously, you know, you're so I think close I am to her. Like my mom, yeah. yeah, maybe she's a little bit more than me, but <laughs> she's amazing. And she would be like, oh no, I'm okay, thank you. And she'd just be like, no, like I love this guy. Like I want him to come over for dinner and whatnot. And he just started coming over. And later on, he realized that he was playing football with my brother-in-law, one of my cousins, and then his uncle, who's best friends with my brother-in-law, which is so crazy <laughs> to us. There's a lot of like um, connections being made. And then he started coming over. We became like really good friends. We'd go get ice caps like every week, catch up. And then um, we drifted apart because his ex-girlfriend thought that there was something going on between us. So oh it was like everyone gosh. else saw it, but we didn't see it. Yeah. yeah, it was one of those things. So she was like, I don't want you hanging around with him. And then my ex started getting a bit weird too because he's like, I just don't feel comfortable with you around him and whatnot. So we stopped talking out of respect for like the people we were dating at that time. And then uh, in March, I came to India and we, we were talking at that point. We started talking maybe like right when I got home or a little bit before. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I have to expose myself. What? Oh, yeah. Are you I'm exposing oh, yourself? No, no, I got to completely expose myself. A little overlap. A little overlap. Oh. So when I realized I didn't want to be with my ex, I was in America. I, w I would go for drives at nighttime because I'd be so upset. I would take my dog with me and I'd just get an ice cap. And this one Little day, drives, okay. I, little this one night. Drives. No, no, no. I Honestly, just, just drives. Like nothing else. <laughs> D, come on. Okay. But the, the most shadiest thing I did was this. Okay. And I called my now husband. I got his number from my cousin and I called him and I was like, hey, how are you? And he's like, oh, like it's so random, right? Yeah. So we just started talking. We talked for like two hours, I think, that day. And we caught up on each other's life and he told me everything that's going on with his, mine, whatnot. And I, I tell him, I said, I'm going to delete our call log because I'm not supposed to talk to you. But if you can just call me because I don't want to be a complete liar and we can just talk for five minutes so I can tell my ex that you, that had you a called and that's it. Like, you know, so that that was pretty shady of me. But. No, I feel like you two were just soulmates, pretty, though. That's still pretty innocent for a shady move. I know, but that's <laughs> a shady <laughs> move. Can I just say, can I just put the point across? That's shady. Across? I'd be that is shady in my eyes. And don't you dare think that that could ever be acceptable, okay? It's shady, but like, <laughs> it, it is shady. It is. Because now I find it that. Like that. No, she no, didn't. The thing is, right, it's all acceptable now because obviously you guys are together and it just makes I, it a more I romantic know, but story. The fact that something inside of me was like, no, let's make a Punjabi like, film. He was my comfort uh, zone. Uh, they should make a Punjabi film on good knees. No. <laughs> no, no. She can be the person playing in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, guys. Yeah. Really you guys like... put me on a really high scale up there. <laughs> but no, I was like, uh, I, I knew it was shady because like that's something that I wouldn't want my man doing to me. But like our you had relationship so much stuff was just, going on, yeah. No, uh, it was just like a mess at that point. It was gonna end anyway. But it's it's still shady. Dude. Don't be don't be getting any ideas. <laughs> Trust me, I no, I know. Pleasure. You guys are you guys are so cute, by the Aww. way. Like, <laughs> you guys just work. <laughs> you guys work. Um, but anyway, so um, yeah. Then he was like, "Well, when I was in India, he goes, I want your mom to come for dinner." And I was like, Ugh. in my head, I'm like, I don't want to go because I was annoyed at a few things. One that he like stopped talking to me over his ex girlfriend and whatnot. Even though like it's understandable, you should do that if someone if someone feels threatened and whatnot. But I was just kind of like, uh, and then there's another thing that happened where he stopped coming over to my house at one point. So I was like, okay, well, if, well I'm not going to come to you yeah, when we're in India. So I was being like, oh, uh, whatever, right? And then my mom's like, no, I'm going. Like, he invited me, we're going. So we met up with him in Fagwara, went to his house. We had a really nice dinner. I got along with his mom and dad, like, so well. Yeah, I think they're like kind of like my best friends at some point because can, I can talk to them about anything and everything. Um, yeah, so anyway, so we went to his house and his mom, I could just tell she just like wanted me to be her daughter in law, like since the day. Because she would always be like, Oh, you're so pretty. Just, I was going to say his name. He should be like, Tinu bi dadi kuri chai di, yeah, right in front of me. And I'd be like, What? And then, like, um, I stayed at his house. So she was like, Sleep over one night. So I came, I had like one shirt, one leggings. That's probably about it. Maybe a toothbrush. I don't know. A few things. And I ended up staying there for two weeks. No. Because I didn't want to go to my own family's because yeah. I had such a great time. Same leggings for two weeks. Yeah, no, I was probably wearing all of his. Uh, I got new clothes, okay? Yeah, you got all of his joggers, yes. <laughs> no, yeah. I started wearing his clothes, and then yeah. I got my I got my cousin to drop off like my stuff at there, and then my mom ended up coming four days later because she's like, "Yo, it's so much better here." So she ended up <laughs> staying. <laughs> Everyone's got to get his Because we don't have much family here. Yeah. Like, oh. The only one that we were close to at that point was my cousin, who we don't really talk to anymore. But during that time is when we realized like. He's not going to work out. But 
they got mad at us because we started staying in his house, basically. Okay. Aww. That happens a lot here. But I was like, <laughs> I don't care. Like, I'm more comfortable here. And the tailor I had found and, like, everyone that I was working with was all in Faguara. It's about 10-minute drive from his Well, you place. lie. No clothing yeah. lie. Yeah. And that's when I started realizing I like him and he likes me. And I, I think it was always oh, there. You could work that out by then. Yeah. <laughs> by then. So why is this random girl in the house for like four weeks? For four weeks, <laughs> wearing all of Two pictures. weeks! <laughs> and then he, we're just adding a bit of a Yeah, you <laughs> are. And then he wanted me to stay, like, you know, he'd be like, no, stay. And then he would like take days off from like whatever he needed to do and whatever. He wouldn't even go to the gym. And you know, oh, he's a gym yeah. junkie. Like, Every day, he would not he would the be gym. at the gym. His gym partner like probably despises me, but it's okay, <laughs> we, we, we're friends. But he knows, he's like, tail Bobby goes back home. Like, this guy's not coming to the gym fully. <laughs> But he's been better now because I've been here for so long now, right? So you guys were in India, you stayed at his, and then I think you said you and your mom went to tell that bit as well. To his house. No, no, when you went to, did you go like to, you and your mom went somewhere. Oh, on a you... trip after. Yeah. So in India, um, the last <coughs> night that I was there, we ended up sleeping over at my friend's house because I have a friend in India. And we both ended up sleeping over there. We had a great time. We told each other we liked each other, whatnot. We like really expressed our love to each other. Then the next day, I had a flight to Singapore with my mom. I wanted to take my mom on like an early Mother's Day trip. She's never really been anywhere. So we went there for about three nights. And on the way there, my mom's like, I was like, why? And she's like, me, And then, uh, explain, uh, that like, and then, uh, explain that in English that people know as well, what you're saying. She was like, oh, like, I just, how do you say that? Oh my like, God. my I'm heart. Blanking out. Look, are you here for job and can't even get put in? Oh my God. <laughs> so, what would you, how would I'm you say it? Like, I'm not. Like, uh, my, my, heart's my heart's not, like, yeah, yeah like, my heart's not, like, yeah. happy right now. Like, I, I miss, I miss them. Yeah. And she goes, um, there was this, a woman that worked at his house who would, like, make rotis and whatnot, make all the food. And she goes, I really miss Rimpy. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, I miss her food. I was like, yeah, I miss her too. <laughs> what a weird thing, you know? But I was like, okay, yeah, she's sweet. And then, um, we get there, it's our first night, we go to sleep in the morning, I'm like, Mom, I want to go back to India. And from my heart was like aching for him, not so much India, right? And I was like, oh, I miss him. And then I was texting him, and I was like, I miss you, what not, blah, blah. And my mom goes to me, she goes, oh, um, I, uh, what did she say to me? She goes, she goes, I think he yeah. likes you. Yeah. Oh, it's, I think he I likes think, you. She goes, I think he likes you. And I was like, why do you think that? And she goes, no, just the way he looks at you. Like the way he would like carry your bag everywhere we went. So when we were in Punjab, he would carry my bag everywhere. And she had just the way he talks to you, the way he like just in his eyes, I can tell he likes you. Yeah. I was like, I don't know, mom, he never told me. So I never told her that like we had just recently told each other we liked each other. Because one, I was like, is this too fast <coughs> in my movie? Is my mom going to even like agree to this? Is she going to be okay with it? So I was at that point where I was like, I'm just going to leave it to God. Like, if it's meant to be, it'll be. Because I'm the type of person that forces things to happen all the time. Like, I want control over everything. So I was like, I'm just going to leave it to God. And my mom goes, well, if you don't know, I can ask him for you. <laughs> and I was like, what? She goes, wait, are you over your ex? Like, we're done with him? Because she's like, I do not like him. Like, <laughs> I, like, I do. She's like, he's great as a person, but you guys together just... I you know when your mom she... says she doesn't like your partner, that you you and your partner are just not yeah, meant to be? Yeah. And my mom's <laughs> my best friend, so she probably knew more than yeah. me, right, yeah. at that point. And then she goes to me, she goes, um, how about I talk to his family? I'm like, what? She goes, you're at that age, like, you should, you know, maybe, like, we should get um, an married, marriage engaged. in a way, you know, yeah. for you. And I was like, I don't know, I don't know if he likes me. I just kept saying that, even though I knew. She calls him that night, and she goes, hey, and she's talking, and she goes, so... Do you like my daughter? And he goes, I'm gonna give the phone to my mom. And he just goes, uh, <laughs> No, I he, he couldn't even speak because he's like, This is my best friend. Like, I'm on the phone with my best friend, and I can't, like, I can't tell her that I like her daughter. So his mom goes, Oh, Sasrikal, hello, whatever. He right? starts talking. And my mom goes, We really like your son, yeah. like, for our daughter. And she's like, Really? And like, Right away, like his mom was so happy because no she's way. been dropping hints that she like yeah, wants yeah. me as a daughter-in-law, whatnot. And then um, we talked to his dad, and his dad had literally tears going down his face because he's like, "This is probably like the most amazing thing that's happened to us in years." Because they have like a bad streak going on for years yeah. of like everything, and even today, like they always say it, like every single day they'll be like, "You have like changed the luck into this family." Like you have. I've got goosebumps. It's it's so sweet. Like I. His parents are actually one of the sweetest people I've ever met in my life. Like, they expect nothing from me. There's nothing that they want. They treat me like their own daughter. I don't feel like a daughter-in-law. Like, 
when I go to my own bend is where I don't feel as comfortable, but I feel more comfortable at his bend. Wow. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I live here, you know? But isn't that so mad how you went through that initial experience where right. like you had so much like shit from your in-laws and you just take so much. Yeah. But then you made that decision to get yourself out of that situation. Yeah. And now like, look yeah. where you are. Best and life. yeah, and people trying to hate on it. The brother don't know how. No, and can you imagine like staying in something that like is so toxic and no one likes you and every time you're at a dinner, you just feel like they just want you out of there. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like I could have been that girl to be like, you know, people are gonna talk too much shit about me. Yeah. Like I can't do this on like, you know, on social media, whatnot. And like, I don't want my parents to be embarrassed, whatever. Like I'm just gonna stay here. Can you imagine how different my life would be right now? Oh, crazy, crazy different. And even yeah. all the stuff that people were saying, because it went off on Twitter, didn't it? Like, it went absolutely crazy when you got married. Oh my God. Um, one photo, didn't you? you put one photo. I put one picture up, and they were like, she doesn't deserve to be a part of an Anand Garj. And I can't say I'm the most religious person. I can't. Like, I have not read the entire. So explain. So, what were they saying on Twitter? Oh, I can't even remember. They were, just so in that, they were saying that you couldn't have. That Basically, people were tweeting saying that they weren't happy that Gurneet had an Anand Garaj because she's on OnlyFans, basically. Yeah, yeah, like that you can't like, you can't not follow, you know, the religion's rules and then still do an Anand Garaj. Yeah. And like, I don't understand that because for one, alcohol is not part of it. Yeah. Meat's not supposed to be a part of it. And those are things that almost every day. Weed is not a part of it, which is a huge thing in Lower Mainland. Yeah. So it's just, to me, it's like, I get where some of them are trying to. cocaine, all the rest of it. Right, and I get it's where like they're trying to. All the people talking, her. coming at you for that. Yeah. They all go out on the weekend. They go to strip clubs. They sup Prostitutes, my women. My fan base is Punjabis, yeah. right? And it's yeah. like, well, what about those people? Aren't yeah, they getting married? They're, they're paying you money to look at that content. And, and they're getting another gun. Right, and I can't, like like I said, like I don't want to speak too much on religion because I'm not a religious person. Yeah, of course, I'm more yeah. of a spiritual person. Yeah. Um, my family believes that if you don't have a Nantgarj, you are not married. And I believe in it. So I did try to like understand Anand Karaj, what marriage is for like um, our culture, our religion, whatnot. But like, I can't say I follow our religion fully. Like we're not even supposed to like, we're supposed to be fully covered up. Yeah. But are we? Like, you know what I mean? So just like there's so, m we could go into so many different aspects. But you know what? There was a lot of brown girls who had my back in those tweet Twitter wars. Those, brown I will always remember them. They were like going off on these guys. And you know what? most fucked up thing is it was all men yeah. yeah every person had something to say was men maybe one woman but it was and all men. Women as well. right and i remember when i woke up to that <laughs> that whole twitter thing going on like that month i also made so much money <laughs> I, I don't think these people realize when they like make me go viral like that it ends up benefiting me but obviously emotionally it can be draining <laughs> so there, there was like no, a what okay. coming for me i remember i Thank turned you. around and i said to my husband i said this is too much for me to handle. Like I feel drained. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I don't want to be on social media because people can get to you and affect you. And there's like that, those three days, Twitter was just all about me. My whole feed was about me. The search history viral only fans, Punjabi, all about me. And I was like, my friends were sending it to me. My cousins were sending it. It's just everywhere. And I was like, I need a break. I need a break. Like I was having a panic attack. And then he goes to me, he goes, do you really think the people that are writing this follow our religion? I was like, I don't know, probably since they know so much about it. And he's like, no, because one of the most basic things is giving respect, not yeah. talking shit about people. Amen. Being very, right? Being very, so he's like, if they can go there to like expose you and say, they could, they could think whatever they want in their you know, heads, yeah. but to go and like have, you know, trigger fingers like on Twitter, like, are you serious? Like, he that was goes just against like, it. yeah, and he was just like, if you don't, know, you're going to be on social media, like this stuff is going to happen. And, but the way he explained it to me, like, cause he is religious more than me, at least. Like, he actually knows, he reads thought, he understands, like, not all of it, but he, like, actually sits there and tries to, like, understand what the meaning is, searches it up. Like, he is interested in knowing what it says. Mm -hmm. And he was like, these, don't, these guys don't even know what they're talking about. And yeah. you're upset over what they're saying? Yeah. But I'm like, it's everywhere. He's like, so what? Yeah. He's like, how much money did you make today? Yeah. <laughs> That's the best like, attitude uh, to have. You know what? Yeah. It's, it's so frustrating. So everyone was the same. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. She was like, yeah, they say, but I make money. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. I got a message just like two days ago being like, uh, your husband lets you, your husband lets you um, be thrown around or something like that. And he just watches it because he's making your money. Like, 
he's not making my money. Like, he's not even one of those people. Like, he's not like that at all. So it's like, he does his own thing. He's, he has his own life. But he just supports it because he's like, you, these guys are already looking at you in this, like, dirty eye, like, through this dirty eye lens on Instagram when you post bikini pictures. So, so what if you charge them? Now they're mad that you charge them? Like, come on. You know what? I had, like, you couldn't have put it any better. Right? It's just frustrating how people always think that they can, like, have opinions on what you can do. At the end of the day, it's your life. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. just you focus on you. Right. And Gurnese is out here living her best life. <laughs> living so. my best life. You know what? But you know what? It's, it's normal to like be opinionated, especially in our culture, right? Because like, yeah, is, look yeah. at our, all our family members. But yeah. I've I've actually done a really good job on like gaining a control of judging people. Because like I used to look at people and be like, oh my God, what is she wearing or what is she doing? But when I started realizing like, but what if she doesn't have anything <laughs> but that? Or what if like this person just went through, or anything, or what if she just likes it? Yeah. Why does that hurt me? Why it's because I'm projecting myself, right? I'm projecting. You could be a porn star sitting next to me and I will not have one ounce of judgment. This is before OnlyFans, you know? Like it's just, it's not my place. If that makes you happy and you're okay with it, I don't care, you know? So yeah, that's kind of how I view it all. Like it's okay to do what you want to do. Yeah. Right? And then people were like, oh, like there's young girls that are following you, you're giving them a bad example. But it's like, that's not my responsibility. I never got up on social media saying, young girls, follow me, that you're gonna, you're gonna follow what I do. I'm on there just living my life and you guys like it because you guys can relate and that's just what I've been doing. That's but it, there's the no more thing is that I that Because as we live in a Western world, like what do you expect from into a country where, well, or, or a set of countries that there's huge pop stars doing madness anyway. And like yeah. all our girls, Follow them pop stars. Yeah. What they wear, what they, what they wear. do. Yeah. Yeah. Or like Cardi B and her OnlyFans, yeah. or like yeah. all these, you know. Like yeah. Cardi B, Cardi B, uh, Meg the Stallion, it's just the way the world's going. It's just the way, the way it is. And like, what, yeah. what are you going to do? Like, are you going to just. Right. Are you going to like shelter your daughters from everything? And it shouldn't affect you. Like, like, honestly, nothing that you do, like you two, even as people do in your life, affects me. Like, I am your friend because I enjoy your company. I care about you guys. That's it. Whatever you decide to do tomorrow, I will never be the one to judge because I accept you as who you are. And that's all I want from you. There's nothing I expect from you. Like, if tomorrow you guys start OnlyFans together or whatever that may be, like, uh, compared to that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't care because yeah. I'd be like, yo, are you happy? Yeah. That's it. That's the only thing I want from my friends, my family, people but I love, people I follow. Like, there's some influencers that I really like, like Leanne V and Catherine McBroom, Shyla Walker, even though they both are, like, I don't know if you guys know them, but they have, like, beef. Okay. But, but I like all of them. And it's like, yeah, the thing is, like, they do some things that people are like, what the hell? What, like, you know, have you heard of the Ace family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people like, oh, they're Maybe like, not. but a massive YouTube family. So they get a lot of shit, whatever. Like people say they're not authentic, but not, and maybe they're not. I don't know. But if they if they make me happy, I'm gonna keep watching them because it's it's entertainment, it's fun. And why should I be the one to even like judge? I don't know them. I've never even sat down with them. And the thing right? is, as well, I think it's really unfair for people just to label you as this only fans girl. That's literally all so, they see. But this, there's so much more to you, need Like you're such a massive ambassador for like mental health, talking about, you know, the stuff that you've gone through. Like every day I see your story, it's always like, I love myself. You're putting like positive affirmations out Aww. there. Good morning, love bugs. Good That's morning, it, love bugs. Thank you so many cards. I say, good morning, love bugs. I know, and I stopped <laughs> for a while. Yeah, really. I haven't been feeling too well, because you know, India, the, the weather change and like the water. It's been very cold today, it's lovely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, because of, <laughs> of that. So it's just been one of those things so where I'm like. fuck it, love bugs. Fuck all the love bugs up. Yeah, I was literally at one point, I was like, I can't, I wanted to, but I just didn't have, like, I wasn't even in that mental space. Yeah, know. but it's good it because it just shows that you're authentic. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Don't post stuff because you're trying to no. be something you're not. Yeah, so no. real life, like, in, in, like, when we work for an employer, we take holidays. Yeah. We don't look at our work as yeah. a holiday. Yeah. So same, same, if you take a few weeks off. You have to take, oh, like, yeah. stuff off for your mental health and whatnot, yeah. but... Yeah. Well, so obviously we said that there's that side too, but also like let's touch on just the sand. So talk yeah. to us, what is just the sand? How did this come about? Gurneet is like finally living her dreams finally. and doing what she wants to do. Uh, so just the sand is a company I'm starting for Indian clothing line. It's going to be very like chic, elegant. It's almost like I don't want to compare it to any other brand, but if you looked into the, into the Western world, like Zara and. Um, Aritzia, you know, they have like really cute backless outfits, whatnot, but super chic, super simple. It's kind of like that meeting Punjab. Like that's no. the best way to, you know, like the West meeting Punjab is yeah. basically the whole thing. So um, 
I've been planning it for three years, like actually putting in work for three years, but it just never ended up happening for me. Like in 2019, I came and I did a whole line. It didn't work out. Okay. I'm so glad it didn't, because now when I look back at the designs, it's just not, it wouldn't scream what it screams now. And then this uh, 2022 in March, I came and I did the whole line, which is gonna be like a caffeine line, and I'm not gonna launch it till probably fall. And then I decided when Serena got here, she wanted um, some cotton suits. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, summertime, cotton suits. Like even in like Vancouver, there's so many mele, there's so many little events that come Box. up where you want to wear like suits like this. Yeah. And they're affordable and they're nice and they're chic and whatnot. So Serena gave me this idea and I basically started doing this entire cotton line. And um, although the ones that Serena have, has, no one else can have because those were exclusive. Oh, people, so, people can have them so, if they want. <laughs> they're really hard to find though. Like you're not going to be able wearing. to find the same one. Right now, a bespoke. Just, just Assange design. Yeah, if you guys are watching. You need to have a look at my lovely suit and Gurneet's lovely suit. Can I just say, oh. there is, I'm very, very picky with outfits and Dee will know this now from shopping with me in yeah. Punjab. I'm so particular with Actually, what I, I like. I did shopping with you and you didn't like anything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's true, I'm so picky. Ah, uh, me too. But for the first time ever, I've been able to get a suit made from Gurneet exactly the way I like oh. it. Because I I love like the way Gurneet, you know the way Gurneet always wears her suit? That's why I knew I wanted to come to you to get the maids. Because you always do the nice neckline, the oh. funky sleeves, the low back with the cute dory, the salvars yeah. all made like really nice with the gathers done. Oh right. Okay. He understands it now. It. So it's, it's hard, but when you come to India and you shop with your fiance, your wife, your girlfriend, you're gonna get it. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna but get no it. But no one's got the eye like you, because the thing oh. is people live here and their style's so different here. But even, so yeah. So put these up to the he is like I told you, Uchi. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's a big thing. Like my yeah. own mom will be like, "They're yeah. suitable, Uchi. Like they're yeah. too high up. Like the yeah, jumpers. the kameez. They say the top's too high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but to me, it's like our our style is like Western now, right? Like we we grew up there. Yeah. And for us to like, I want our culture to still be alive, but in our way. You know, like I still want to feel good. I want to feel cute when I wear my outfits. And like I know that most people here probably wear like up to here, and like yeah. which is totally fine. Below the that knee. Style too. Yeah. There's some suits I have like that, but personally, I love cotton suits with tiny jumpers, a lot of like patiala salwar in the back, where there's like you know layers going on, and deep necks like back. You know, the back yeah. is really nice. With a cute dory. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I, it started with uh, just like a really chic caffeine line, which I put on hold. It's the caffeine done. line being the color of your range, right? Yeah, so it's like a caffeine, of, yeah. ca caffeine, I haven't, caffeine I'm color. I'm thinking of calling it like the espresso line or something, but I'm not sure yet. You should call it, what's that a drink you like? The ice cap. Ice cap, I do have um, I do have an outfit called the oh, ice cap. Oh, okay, well that makes sense. Yeah, I just hope um, they don't, they, don't, they can't. They can't sue me, can they? Can they no. like copyright? Ice cap with a K or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do something. But um, no, it's cool because um, that line is shot. It's ready. It's on the website. It's just privately done. It's everything is good. Like my model wore it. I have a whole team back home. But I can't launch it because I was like summertime. Like I need to do this. So I was bright, like, I'm gonna, colorful, and it's more simple. And that way, I get like a little bit of um, a touch of what people like. You know, like I'll get the orders and whatnot. And the hardest thing here was finding a tailor. I went through like 10 tailors yeah. for the last three years. Because it's not. hard to find people who understand the Western touch that we like to put on yeah. our like Punjabi yeah. suits, basically. And even now, like whenever I get my suits made and whatnot, it'll still be like maybe a little loose from here or a little loose from here. And like, and that's the thing, like when you make something just for you, it's never, they can't make it, like you might get lucky, you might. But I probably like, 90% of the time, there's always a little bit looseness and whatnot. So like that's something I'm probably gonna put a disclaimer out on, but it's still like, it's still gonna be but more than... That's the vibe of your whole line, right? Because remember what I spoke to you about just the Sanj, and I was like, oh, Gurneet, why don't you just do standard sizing? Like small, oh, right. medium, large, extra large, yeah. and people yeah. can just have that and do it as they want to. Yeah. And you were like, well, you say what you were saying to me. What's your brand guidelines? That's it. What about your brand guidelines? I what does really, your brand stand for? Yeah, it's very important for my brand to be about every single shape because extra small, small, medium, large, that's not who you are. And it sucks that like when we go shopping, that's who we are. Like I, in Aritzia, I was extra, extra small. And we're like, you're so tiny in like a really bad way. And it's like, well, what's wrong with that? That's what fits me. So I feel like, wouldn't it be nice for you to not be 
a small, to not be a medium, to not be a large, to be exactly what you are. So the whole brand is about you. And that's why we also do like consultations. Um, I have like a little calendar where you can like schedule in. It's like a $50 deposit, which will go towards your suit. But you could actually like do a whole 30 minute video call with me. And we can that's talk sick. about exactly what kind of patterns you like. What, you know, if you're, if you're getting confused on the website, you don't know if you want to change the colors. It's customizable because I want you to feel like you don't have to fit in to be a part of Just Assange. You get to be you. And it's like that, isn't yeah. it? It's uh, just you, <laughs> just the sand. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just for you, it's just the sand. Exactly. How did they go back? So I was sitting with my brother-in-law. Um, we were having like, I think it was Rakri time. I can't even remember. We were just like taking care of the kids, hanging out. And I told them, I said, hey, I'm working on a line. This is two and a half years ago. I'm working on a line. I'm thinking of calling it, like I was, I was trying to say Desange, like just Desange, like just the last name Desange. And he goes, what about just Desange? Like, it vibes like instead of Desange, like you know, oh, I shopped at Desange. Imagine I shopped at Just Desange. It sounds yeah. sick. It yeah. sounds. And I'm like, right away, I was like, this is what I want to name it. Yeah. And I always um, wanted to get my dad into this somehow. And really, the only thing I have of my dad is his last name, and yeah. I guess me. <laughs> but I was like, okay, that that way it has a little bit of a sentiment yeah. to it. And like yeah. my mom is the one that designed suits with me since I was like a young girl. So. I really wanted my parents to be like a part of it. Yeah. That's yeah. sick. Well, can't wait for that to come out. I know you're going to do so well with it. I love my suits and I know that yeah. I found my go-to girl oh. now. Number one customer. <laughs> and she just gets it. Like anytime I say, she's like, oh, you want to live it like this and like this? I'm like, right. Yeah, that's but it. I learned a lot by me because you're my first client like in a way, right? And I, I learned a lot with you because there were certain things, right? Like the dye didn't match the certain material. So now I know like if it's your suit and you just need a tailor, I have to make sure that the fabric is the fabric that will be dyed to any color. But that's what's good about you because you don't just let things go. Like you'll spot it straight away and be like, actually, no, Serena, like this is Yeah, this, I'll this, call this. you right away. Yeah. I'm like, Serena, this is the problem. Or, yeah. This is the thing. But if it's like my material like this, I at least I know exactly what goes into it. We won't have any like screw ups because like I know what kind of materials I'm picking, what not. But what I really like is like how we cust like you and I sat there, we customized like details. Like you were not picky at all. She's like, I want one sleeveless, one no, two inch, I am one picky. long sleeve. No, no, I am picky, Grenade, but with you, I wasn't picky because I knew you would get it. That's why. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm so picky, but I just knew yeah. that you would get it. So I get why because when I started off with all the tailors, dude, nothing fit properly and nothing yeah. was like what it was the supposed shape. to be yeah you tell it, them a certain when like yeah no problem no problem back or not and they're just kind of doing normal because they 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 don't understand the concept yeah yeah and i like having like the cups um you know instead of wearing a bra because i don't like my bra straps showing and i think that's something that a lot of girls struggle with like when they wear blouses it's not when they're like oh my straps showing and it just it throws off the look sometimes right and for those that people that don't like it like to find a guy who could like be a good tailor and putting the cups in right is so hard. Yeah. It's so hard in Punjab because nobody really wears them here. Uh, so I'm so thankful for my tailor, my manufacturer team, everybody. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that you have to invest before you can make money. Like exactly. I'm putting so much into it, but I'm like, it'll slowly pay off, but at least it'll be like, it's not gonna just be like, you call, it's not gonna be like you call India and you order WhatsApp and you order a suit and it comes in like a little, you know, see-through yeah. lafafa. It's yeah. gonna be like beautiful packaging. And like, I want people to feel the experience. I want them to feel special when they get their suits. Yeah, it's gotta be bespoke. Yeah. Do you feel like, Gunith, like say, and I will anyway, just the sound kicks off, right? You're killing it. Would you ever leave OnlyFans? And then just pursue just the sound. I do want to leave OnlyFans. Like, I don't want to be on it forever. Um, I hope to have kids. <laughs> and I just don't know how I would tell my kids about this. Like, I, I'll figure it out during that time when people tell her, like, you think your mom had OnlyFans or tell him. <laughs> but I feel like, um, I don't know, I feel like by then, my priorities are going to change. And I don't think, like, I'm going to be aligned with OnlyFans. Right now, I'm living my best life. Like, I'm young. I feel hot. I feel good. You're freshly good. married. I cute. should be wearing what I want to wear. I yeah. should be feeling sexy. But I feel like by then, I'm still going to feel sexy, but maybe a little more private. <laughs> <laughs> private sexy. And honestly, like, there's so much backlash that comes with it. And I don't think I want that while I'm raising my kids and whatnot. And I, like, imagine having... Traumatic young... for a kid, wouldn't it? Because they, they haven't seen the world. And imagine having a young girl who is so inspired by you, right? And I really hope my daughter is, but, and her asking you questions like, well, mom, somebody told me that you did this. Like, how do I explain to my five-year-old child what I did? So I'm still like in the works of thinking about that, but I don't want to do it forever. I'm thinking maybe a few more years. A few more years and then hopefully. Yeah. Well, it will, but we're going to put it out there. Just as long, <laughs> just going to kill it. Well, Good news, can leave her any fans. Anyway. 
that's it you always have us anyway oh i love you guys so yeah it's that time isn't it do you it's ready that time? it's time it's for our game you guys have a game yeah, yeah we have a game <laughs> i don't think i ever finished a podcast episode <laughs> <laughs> i don't think so not completely so basically what you gotta do is you gotta do 10 star jumps 40 burpees <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, this is why you made me wear a suit? <laughs> so we have a game, it's called Rated or Not Rated. Bit of UK slang. So rated means we rate it, we like it. Okay. Uh, that's good. Uh, not rated is the opposite of that. It means I don't like that. I don't, okay. I don't, I don't rate it. At all. Yeah, um, exactly that. So what we've done is me and D together come up with certain... A list of things. Scenarios, uh, names of brands, things like that. Loads of different pick things we've picked out, and we're going to shout them out. You, and you oh. say, yes, I rate that or no, not, not rated. Ooh, okay, you got this. So do I actually rate it with numbers, or do I just mean no, 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 you better rate it. Okay. Yeah. okay, you, you uh, Englandies. Can't can't say, <laughs> and you can't say, oh, uh, I'm in the middle. It has to be. One yeah, one. yeah, oh, yeah. We don't let people do on the it. fence say you've got to make your decision and stand by it. Okay, go on, do you hit it with the first one? Yeah. No, don't rate it. Not rate it. Not rate it. Uh, uh, oh, that's how I say. Not rate it. Uh, our next one is plastic surgery. Rated. Yeah, you like it. Do it got... makes you happy, man. <laughs> <laughs> she got the nose job. Look, she looks flipping amazing. She looked good before anyway. Show them the side profile. Show them the side profile. Look at that. You go, girl. You shine, girl. <laughs> I think you should do what makes you happy. I got a lot of backlash for that, too. Well, what don't what? I get backlash? No, it's Can I just say, every yeah. brown girl has a nose job. Now, I'm a makeup artist, and... Loads of my clients are no strong. And what's drop. wrong with and that? And it looks so good. Yeah. I'm like flipping out. You look amazing. Do what you need to do. Nothing wrong with it. Okay. This one's so funny. How'd you Rated. Wait, can we explain what not is? I bet your rate down much. Explain what Hajimola is. Let's explain it. Hajimola is... Do you guys not have the thing? Oh, I have a big piece of water. Oh, oh wow. Oh, to my bag over there. We'll oh, just like edit wait, it wait. in. Let's get Gurneet's husband to bring it. Hold on, you can chuck it, you don't have to be in the camera. We can show your back Settle if you it. want, babe. Yeah, we'll look like uh, against the camera. Don't throw it, you're gonna crack her skull open. Oh, okay. Hey, I forgot that. he played football. I only discovered this when I came <laughs> to India. This is not a pay. Not... <laughs> 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 but but I want should sponsor us. But the purple one is the best. Okay, so explain this what this is. is. It, like it just helps you. Oh yeah, you. it lasted us the whole trip. Days, I was really upset that you gave me this, cause Serena, don't you dare. So basically, on camera. D, D goes, one day goes, I'm, I'm, I just have an upset stomach. So I texted Serena, I said, should I bring Hajimullah? And she goes, I think she said, sure or something. Or she I was like, what the hell is that? I was like, sure, bring it. Yeah, she's like, like, what I thought it was some like sweet dish. I was like, yeah, bring it. So I bought that. it because I'm like, he said he's an upset stomach and it, and it helps you. Like it's, it basically helps you digest your food yeah. and you fart a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's well, basically tastes like if anyone ever had it. Serena was addicted to it the first few days. It's and so I'm telling you, <laughs> at that point, it was not rated. It basically tastes like black salt or gala luna if you yeah. hit behind yeah, it. Yeah, but it just smells so what that. comes out the other With way. Emily, with Emily in it. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> um, oh, okay, this is a good one. So our next one is foot fetish. Uh, not, not rated. Not rated. Uh, Why? You bloody make a living out of foot fetishes. Not really. It's not as much. Like, oh, I'm not really? as big on it. But I feel like it's cool if you have one. I personally don't have a foot fetish. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not my thing. <laughs> like, I have pretty feet, but that's it. Like, I yeah. just... Yeah, like keep your feet away from me, please. Yeah, like feet doesn't turn me on. Feet actually <laughs> does kind of gross. There's the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, it's either you're, you like. Unless you have really off. nice feet, sure. But like, if people have nice feet, I just don't want to look at like cover. Coconuts or like whitewashed people, like brown on the outside, white on the inside. Okay, not rated. I'm no. sorry. Yeah. I just, okay, it's different if they didn't have a choice and they like just grew up into that environment where they just yeah. didn't know, right? But like for those that know Punjabi, but they act like they're whitewashed, uh, it's not for me. Because there are people like that, right? Like they'll yeah. just like act like Try to they're be not fair into the Western. culture. Like, yeah. oh, I'm nay many. Like I don't, I'm I don't want that. I'm born in like, the Western world. Yeah, I am Western. Kind of like why? Yeah. Like you, your family was from here. Like don't don't you have some kind of connection to it? Yeah. But I mean, if you're like, <laughs> if you're just whitewashed by like you know you choice. Your, yeah, like What's not by choice. Not, not by sure, choice. Sure. Be brought up the right way. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll teach yeah. you, don't worry. <laughs> Come to go. But you gotta be week. open. <laughs> I know, but it's, yeah. I'm not whitewashed at no, all. No, she's I'm not. She just has a hard burn. time speaking no, it. No, yeah, no, it's just the language, not. but I'm a... Big, big but she loves Punjab life. Have you seen oh, the way she's been thriving here? <laughs> <laughs> she's driving tractors. She's wearing salwar patiala suits. She's like, 
Just see, just it's sunny today. I'm wearing my suits. Like yeah. that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. That's what That's exactly what I it. love it. Like, now, I'm a proud and job woman. I've yeah. loved this hair. I've loved it in As India. As we should be. Yeah. yeah should be, this is our roots, isn't it? It's coming here. It's like, I feel You're emotional home. being here. Yeah, yeah me home, too. This, like, is I went, like, this is our soil. Like, yeah. this is I went to like my mom's home where she grew up and it was just so emotional. It was like, wow, my mom like played here. Like, this yeah. is so cool. This is our motherland. Not many places in the world where you have like an ancestral connection to the yeah, because like I'm a bend and stuff, like the energy in your bend. Oh, there's been so many generations of this. Uh, okay, children before marriage. Rated. If You're I had cool a choice, with that. my family was okay with it. I think I would have a kid before I got married to like the person I loved. Yeah. I didn't think you would think that. I yeah. just don't see what the problem is. Like, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. I suppose if you're not really. Like, if you're ready to be a mom, but you're not ready to be a wife. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Do you? Do your thing. But no, and also, like, some people don't believe in marriage. They don't believe in, like, legally um, binded contracts. Of yeah. Like, oh, yeah, well, that's what marriage is. But, like, the thing is, in our culture, it's a big thing, right? So, but I do I don't get why people are ready for marriage. Huh? Yeah, I think they're just like, afraid of commitment. What? Yeah, but what? Like, why Maybe they want to fuck around. Yeah. Well, no. Why it? wouldn't you want to be ready for marriage? Like, if you're in a relationship. Oh, in a relationship, yeah. Like, why would you for marriage, what, what 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 would stop you from getting rid of marriage at start of forget it? Well, obviously one factor would be how long you've been with somebody. That's one factor. Well, Sometimes yeah, they've been together for like ten years and like I'm not ready. Yeah, yeah. I think they're just it's just not the right person. And all yeah, I be, agree with that, hundred percent. Be with some, yeah, then, then don't be with that person. Or some people have like commitment issues from their past, like just some trauma, family. It could be anything. Like if they're like used to a lot of divorces around them, they're just kind of scared of the whole. Which is a good point as well. Yeah, you got like you've been together in an actual relationship, like actually like. Oh yeah, me and my husband were together for like what. What would you Four say? or five months before we decided to get married. But you know each other for years, and also sometimes yeah, it's just it when helps. you know, you know. Each other for right. years. I just knew. I was like, this is gonna work. Sorry, I love the birds when they I, fly like that. They're so beautiful. Oh. Everyone on the audio right now is thinking, what the fuck? You know what? Everyone on audio right now must be like, what the hell is going on? Because we've got some guy yeah. next door. Like, yeah, we're sorry. Away. Really There's a sub you when a guy walks but drive past. He's like, hello. Don't sub you then, I'll be in all. But that's what I wanted to do outdoors to get the authentic right, sounds of the fitness right, right. so everyone feels like they're here with us. Babe, if you want to sit down, you can. This guy's been standing the entire standing like, time. Ju uh, Gunny's husband has been standing like a proud dad. What <laughs> he's so proud. Whole, he's, <laughs> I've never seen a more proud one than my whole life. <laughs> he's so cute. He fixed my mic and he goes, he's just looking at the mic. He's like, he's been staring at the mic the whole time. He's good. honestly been so helpful through this whole podcast. He's like, water now for us. A shout out to you. Even last night, he's like, are you nervous? He's like, are you nervous? My mom's gonna love this interview. Yeah. You, just, you just said it for her. Dee's basically saying everyone needs a husband like Gunny's husband in, in so English. Oh, we have to always translate it because we have to know that some people don't understand the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good to translate. So, anyway, yeah. children before marriage was rated. All right, he's excited for the next one. Go on, what are you excited about? Primark. <laughs> Primark, you bought it. Primark! 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 Okay, I have Primark. only been to Scotland like freaking seven times in my life or eight times because my family's from there too musty are from there yeah. they call it Primark all my cousins call it Primark and then I asked them I said yo everyone's saying it's Primark they're like no it's an England thing I was oh, like oh okay. so Scottish people say Primark okay. and then Englandese we say knows. Primark <laughs> <laughs> Primark doesn't sound right D it's I feel like Primark sounds more right than Primark Primark sounds weird. Primark sounds kind of like this, right? Like, like, like uh, auntie couldn't say it. Yeah, yeah, Primark. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly I know, what. But, exactly. Mean, but dude, the sales there? The sales there? So there's a constant sale. There's just everything. You guys are so, so good. lucky. Like, I could never find shoes, like heels my size, that aren't over $150. Mm -hmm. $120 even. Because I'm size 5. I'm, I'm really it's UK 3, I think I am, or 2. Oh, you know, so you've got tiny feet. Really tiny feet. So I get so many heels from there. Every time I'm there. This rack up. <laughs> You're just living the best life in Primark or Primark. Like How much your heels? Twelve or ten pounds, wow. eight pounds. Yeah. We yeah. had a massive. We had a massive pre Primark or Primark haul. Yeah. Before we gave it. I in love fact, that. In fact, I started filming that haul. Amazing oh, stuff. Oh, I'm best of guys. Oh my god, do it! I would watch it. Yeah. <laughs> do he bought like some sick outfits. Some best of guys. Do you guys have all of them? Do you guys have an Instagram account together? No. Okay, we'll get on that. Yeah. And that's where you guys could do your little like cute stuff together. Yeah. yeah think about that. We I would love it. it. I would love. We, we are that. looking into that. You should. Uh, but can I just say, for anyone watching, right, girls, 
the men's section of Primark is better than the it's girls' section. Yeah. He had some sick stuff that I've been wearing Ooh, all throughout this trip. Their sweatsuits are so cute. They're so honeys. nice. Everything's nicer in the men's yeah. section. Anyway, uh, okay, next one. This is an interesting one. Okay. Forgiving a cheating partner. Complicated. It's hard to answer that. No, what did we say before we started this uh, game? Um, rated or not rated? Okay, personally, not rated. Personal, from personal experience. However, I am not judging anybody that has. Cause yeah, because you get have as well. I have as well, and yeah. I get like, we how don't you actually. could be in a spot. But if I'm telling you if it works, it just doesn't work because you're just going to resent the person. Like yeah, you're just, yeah. I, And I know some people have made it work, and that's great Like if you are that lucky to make it work. But personally, I could never forgive someone who cheats on me. But you're I human. tried it mm. twice, mm. and I realized like I would just, I wanted to cheat, dude. I was like, I'm gonna cheat back on you. Screw you. And I was it like, that's not that. who I am and yeah. I don't wanna be that person. So I'm I'm just, I'm, I'm a Scorpio, so I'm revengeful. Like yeah. I'm gonna sit here and cheat back on you because that'll make me feel better. Yeah. And then I'll feel regret my whole life for doing that. But Yeah, of course. But it's the price But we're only human, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. resent, like humans do resent each other. If yeah. things, like if things go wrong, right? Like, you do, you will resent each other. That's Even if you try like, and get over it, it still holds a place within your heart. You, you just have to keep it healthy. Yeah. In other words, just cheating is just nah. Uh -uh. Why be in a relationship if you're going to cheat? Just break up with her or him. Like, why are you putting someone else through that? Yeah. You know? Mm. Why? Like, I just, I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe you're not ready. Maybe you don't know. But like, you can literally, if you're into somebody and you realize that, you know, this person is giving me, like, when I used to be into my husband before we got married and I was in a relationship, mm. that was a clue from God. Like, you need to break up because you should never feel like that. Like, yeah, it's okay if like, let's say there's a handsome man that walks by. It's okay for me to be like, that's a good looking man and turn around. Beauty is to be appreciated. Like, I don't mind if my husband looks at a girl and says, oh, she's pretty and just, yeah. you know, that's it. Or she's got head. a nice suit. Yeah, like she <laughs> looks cute, whatever. What, about, what, what if it's, sorry, what if, You just don't need to tell me about it. Okay, <laughs> fair time looking. What happens if he says she's got a nice ass? That's stupid because why are you making your girlfriend? So there's beauty to be flipping one of these. There is, but why do you have to share that? Like, if I see a good looking guy, I don't need to point it out to my man, like, always oh, to make him feel insecure or anything. It's just beauty is to be appreciated because as a human, you're lying if you say that. If there's a girl that goes by my husband and he didn't notice her, but he didn't and stuff, but he can't say it because he doesn't want to hurt my feelings, you're lying to yourself and to the person. But it's like, I'm not going to sit here and ask you if you think that girl was pretty because. That's insecure. That's insecure. And on top of that, like, it's not going to make me feel good. Like, yeah. I, even I thought that, like, I'll be, I'll be like to my husband, like, oh, like, someone in Bajo, but she's so pretty. Mm -hmm. And he'll be like, yeah, like, he'll, he'll be like, yeah, that's it. He will never be like, I love she's that. So, like, he's not that's stupid enough. That's my test I do. I'll be like, yeah. oh my God, she's so pretty. And he'll be like, yeah. nodding his head. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah and not say it. anything more than that's that. And like, yeah, okay. Well, once or twice, I've said something more, and then I, I got to pay it right now. <laughs> And it's probably... Don't think she's me, 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 me. No, no. Especially coming to Punjab. You can't admit it. This you other just... side has come out to her. Since coming to Punjab, I'm getting gone out. I'm getting all sorts. She's to pay her mind me. Uh, you have learned the yeah, level she's of a Punjabi up wife. Yeah, she's picked up... I've yeah. picked up the full knockout of being here. But don't you think it's so natural? Like for, <laughs> for somebody to like think someone's pretty or someone's good looking, like that's inevitable. Of course, yeah, yeah. But you don't need to sit up there and be like, that's why that girl's pretty, that guy's, like why? Like yeah. it's fine, there's beautiful humans in the world. Like I never feel that way. I've never felt attracted to a man since I've been with my husband ever, yeah. like truly. Yeah, cool. But yes, I have yeah. noticed good looking guys here and there, but it's like, it's not enough for me to sit there and look at him just like, oh, he's good looking, okay. And you just yeah. move, like you don't even <laughs> think about it. It's just like, oh, okay, you know, and I think that's okay. Like. It's a universal fact that Sona Bajwa is a very pretty girl. Yeah. Now, if you sit there lying to your woman like Sona Bajwa is not pretty, you're just lying yeah. for no reason. Like, that come makes on. It worse as well. Even someone you know that someone's lying like that. Right? You just think, oh, you know what? Put yeah, like just stop. Like yeah. I, but I, I don't. But cheating, come on. You don't have to go that so far. So we know cheating is not rated. No. Okay. Go on, this is the funny one. Designer dog outfits. Oh, rated? 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 I want to get Romy. I want to get Romy like a Gucci outfit. I want to get LA a Gucci outfit with my babies. Me, I just think it's so cute. I don't get it either. I couldn't. It makes full sense. I'm so into designer. It's so bad. And I know some people say it's like an insecurity. Like, oh, people like buy all this expensive to feel better, whatnot. I just like the feel. Like when I buy a handbag, the feel of that handbag compared to like I have Aldo bags. I have like I love bags in general, or like even Shein or like you know Forever 21. But the feel of the bags, like I just feel so much happier. It's with, the like, quality. Like, oh, yeah. I yeah. have that same thing with cars. Like I'm not. In, if I buy a big car, that's not because me. Okay, but that, 
cars isn't like I don't buy a car to impress anybody. So no, like, it's for I, you. How I design for the you bike. To feel that yeah, it's for you. Wheel, for you I to feel good. Feel the drive. Yeah. I feel good. Like yeah. in it, and that's for me. Like, if right. It's a watch. I feel good with a watch. I wouldn't buy it to impress. Oh, I it. love watches. I don't have a watch, but um, I don't even. Anything expensive. We will. We will, will be. Like <laughs> we will. We will. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. It's like me, but then gas. Priorities. Priorities. But anyway. Hint, hint. <laughs> like, if it feels good for you, it doesn't matter what, like. No. Don't let people put you off. For you. I think if you define yourself with, like, designer or whatnot, then of course. When I think it's wrong is when, like, you're doing it and you don't actually like the fees or you don't like anything. You're doing it for other people, that's wrong completely. You're never pressing it. Like, okay, so happy. back, like, you know, when I was young, there's a bunch of fake bags and stuff, right? And I would, like, yeah. well, I want to buy a fake bag. Da, da, da. And, like, now. Even when I look at fake bags, like, you know, there's so much in Fagwara. So oh many. my gosh, in India, it's so common, isn't right. it? Right, fake like, designer. Even if I make a mistake of like grabbing one and being like, oh, I will never wear it. Mm. And this happens to me all the time, and I'll never take a picture of it because I'm like, this isn't for me. I'm doing it to show people that, oh, yeah. I have designer, but I'm like, this yeah. isn't for me. So if it's not real, you, it's kind of because you're doing it for somebody else, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's actually something my little brother taught me. That's your A long time ago, I bought, this, you know, bro. I bought this fake bag, and he goes, so you're doing it for other people? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, you're not doing it for the feel. You're not doing it for the actual thing. You just want to get a picture in it so you could post it. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. yeah. But I mean, at that point, I was in a fake relationship. I was in a fake YouTube. Everything was fake Everything at that fake. point. <laughs> no, but it's a, life's a learning curve, man. Life's, life's, we're students at our life, aren't we? And like you're healing, we're, like, we're on the same sort of journey ourselves. That's why we do this podcast, because we want people at home to like listen to people's struggles, people's journeys, realize that we're all, we're all the same. We're all human. We're all the same shit. Like they see you posting all the things that you're posting there, and thinking, "Oh wow, she must live an amazing life." Yeah. Which she but does, but do there's everyone has I their do, but down I have my days. days where I'm sitting yeah. up in bed crying. Yeah. Everyone does. Or like anything, right? But like to get there as well, it takes it takes a, like it takes self work. Yeah. yeah. It takes a lot of yeah. work to get there. I think there's a lot of awareness struggle. now. A lot of struggle, yeah, there's a lot more awareness, but even even so, I don't think there's enough. Like, we still need, no, because those hating comments would not be... We need to hit home how hard it is to become yeah. like what we are. And I think also what happens is a lot of people talk about self-work, but no one actually does anything about it. Yeah. There's a lot of talk out there. Oh, manifestation. Oh, you know, uh, affirmation. Manifesting is real. Yeah. yeah. It's real. Like, Amen. It's, it's just, just you have to feel like it already happened. That's like the trick to it's it. It's real to a point, but it's not real if you're just going to sit at home and man, try to manifest it. Or wrap it in the then you better wrap But that's not the, manifesting. Yeah, yeah you have right? to go out and get it as well. You have to go and like, you have to, everything has to be towards that. You got to wake up in that like life that you want every day. But I mean, I've kind of been off my game, not going to lie, the last few months. I just think being in India is actually, because uh, like people come here for a month, right? Yeah. And they're like, morning to night, they're busy. But when you stay here for six months, it's depressing because the thing is, like for in Punjab especially, there's not a lot of independence for women. And that, I feel like my independence is being stripped away. So every single day I have to like, I fight myself to feel like I have some kind of independence. I'm really lucky that I have like in-laws and a husband that's so like chill. Like I can I can be like, I want this today. And if, if he's busy that day, he'll make sure that the next day, like he'll make sure it happens. So it's like, I don't have to sit there and be like, I wish I had my car, I wish I could drive. Like, you know, if I need to do something, it'll happen, but it's still not the same. Like yeah. my everyday routine back home is to grab my dog and go to Tim Hortons every single morning. Like that's just what I do. Sometimes if I'm feeling like I'm gonna spoil myself, I'll go to Starbucks or this like, bakery called Brekka, but it's just like one of the things I like doing and I'll, I'll go for like a long drive. I just, I have to do that every morning. So here it's, it's that, that part is a little shitty. Yeah, but. that, I, I admit. I agree. I do but think it's made me humble. I've come with, um, like I've come with my mom a few times, but like coming with Serena opens, opens um, my eyes up to like, how, um, like how women experience. The experience for a female here. No, it's not. Because he's had to be a lot more conscious of me and look after me, and he's yeah. always doing my own thing. And then she was like, "Oh, what about like about oh, shit?" Yeah, and it's so shitty because you're like, "You're gonna go do your own thing. What am I no, gonna I, do?" I can't just like leave her somewhere. I can't go to a no. shop and say, "Okay, I'm back in a sec." No, you can't because people like yeah. even with walking the streets, always he can't just walk and not look back. He always comes to be looking oh, back. Is she okay? Yeah. There's all these things the you have to think is, about. Looks. Lots of looks, and even guys like they will actually come up to you if you're alone. Like it's yeah. I'm back home too, but here like they do more than just like you know. Yeah. They look and they say things even when I'm with you yeah. and same for you as well, you said. And I, I so. hope that changes, but... People say, oh, can I... We went, yeah, we went um, so we did a wedding in or the airport in Rajasthan. Yeah, I'm just going to grab Once some water. Once we've done the... Can you grab me some water? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we did a wedding out there. I was DJ and Serena was doing the makeup. And then once the wedding was done, we've, uh, we arranged like go around, like sightseeing of the airport, the airport and etc. 
Yeah. And we was in these beautiful pal- forts and palaces and stuff. And people would just come up to us like, come up to Serena and say, can I take a photo? Or ask me, can I take a photo? Oh yeah, yeah. she was telling me this. I was like, can I take a photo? And then, uh, and um, some, a few times I was like, yeah, go on then, why not? I said, go take a photo. And they're like, can I put my arm around her waist? And, like, no, and he's like, excuse me? I'm like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, and then I was like, get the fuck out of here. Oh, and then, and then they're all just taking no for answers. They're like, they're what about her shoulder? Ew, what the they're probably going to show me like, like, this is my oh. girlfriend. I was like, you're not touching her whatsoever. Stand right there, I'll take a photo. Boom. And then they're asking, I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. It's so crazy, man. Like, I feel on. like yeah, being yeah. here, I've had to be a lot more like, Done and really like quite aggressive oh, because no. people don't get it. I can't just be like, sorry, excuse me, would you mind not doing that? Very like British. So she's like, oh, sorry. Same. Or same. Do you mind if you like? Oh, I'm very sorry to inconvenience you. Know? I'll be like, excuse like, no, me, no, sorry. Them, yeah, no. yeah. yeah. In India, you have you to say, be like, that way. You say thank you to them. You'll never get a you're welcome. It's just, I wish I could go to every friend with like a whiteboard. Me and Serena just <laughs> teaching manners to every house. It's not their fault. They just like, yeah, like they should have that in schools here. I used to tell. It's um, the culture, though, isn't it? So they're is. used to that. It's yeah. just we evolved to be brought yeah. up differently. You say thank you is really weird. But I would love to like have some free time and go do stuff like that. Or like you know, like girls here, they don't have a lot of like freedom or like just they can't even express themselves. Some of them can't even wear nail polish. I would love to like take like manicure, pedicure sets, makeup, and go to people's like homes for free and just. Oh like, my god, we make... should do that. Me do the makeup. You can we do the nails. Go... If we're always if we're ever in India, maybe we should take one day out and just go like you know house to house and like oh like make girls like... feel good about themselves and not feel yeah. like they're so like you yeah, know like what's the word if they're allowed to which is so crazy not a like, free bird know. yeah what's the opposite of that what, i was trying to think of it as so uh, isolate, or like, uh, isolated uh, restrained restricted yeah, restricted. yeah. yeah they are. okay let's oh, go on to our oh, last oh, one that started off from designer dog houses <laughs> we were from designer dog i know why I, I that's the thing with me i'll forget what we're talking to, about like giving people like life lessons and manners <laughs> I didn't make to over. bend life to make up. That's yeah. the beauty of a podcast. I know, I love um, it. But our last one, I think this is a really nice one to end it on, to be honest, is um, rated or not rated public relationships? Rated. I don't think there's anything wrong if you are confident enough to be on it because there's a lot of shit that will come your way and if you're not ready for it, yeah. you shouldn't be public. But you're going to have to hear shit from people. People might think it's fake. There's going to be so much shit. But I think if you're authentically just on it but you're public... So what? You're actually going to want to be more private once you're public. You don't want people to know your business anymore. Yeah. But I really think you guys should do an Instagram account together. Yeah. You know, to like I think really we will. There's loads of stuff we've been putting. Take, like, like you guys were in freaking Jap or a, a vapor, yeah. right? You guys could have taken a tripod and made cute little videos of like spinning Serena around. You know, <laughs> and, and people love that stuff. I love that stuff. I sit there and watch stuff like that. I love that stuff. I eat that stuff up. Why, Why do you guys do uh, I don't know. We just so like, we like to romanticize oh, life. Oh, it is so cute. But yeah. <laughs> like I have an announcement to make um, cr- pretty soon about something, and it's crazy because ooh, 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 we don't know about this. You guys kind of know about it, but okay. um, I, I'm trying. Oh, okay. to, what? It's just not something I want to publicly share oh. yet. But I want to make know? this announcement, okay. and I have this t- a, cute yeah, 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 real idea that I want to do. And, and like, like I, I just have this whole thing, and I'm like trying to tell my husband, like, look at this. I send him like videos, and I'm like, this is what we're gonna do. This is what we're gonna do. This is what I, I want to yeah. do. <laughs> so I think it's so cute. Like I, I would, I think you're. YouTube channel would thrive. Let's go to your own podcast together. You guys work together. Just so much. You're going to do YouTube together. Like, yeah. We love doing it because there's not a lot of representation for um, Punjabi brown yeah. couples. Yeah. So that's why we love doing what we do because yeah. we can do that. And there are a few, but I feel like they're not as authentic. Yes, we just had a big oh, so be <laughs> that's that's you guys. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome to the Brinland. Welcome to the Brinland. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's you guys. <laughs> But this would not be. Rolling, rolling. This is what true pajama is. Get this Um, this is Punjab for you. <laughs> Punjab. Right, anything can happen. Any time. Any time. You can be there. Like, uh, like someone can just go past on a on a on a bull. Yeah. Like, a cow can just walk into your house. Yeah. Like anything yeah, can yeah, happen. Yeah. It. <laughs> right, anyway, what was he saying? It's important. Oh yeah. Um, sorry about the public relationships. We were talking about being a rep- representing oh, okay. for Jumpy Brown couples. Yeah. Yeah.
representing like uh, Punjabi bar couples. Represent we just represented it quite well. <laughs> yeah, right exactly. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, you have to be ready for it. I remember you were saying earlier about being ready. Uh, yeah. Because them insecurities can come out in your relationship, can come out sure. like from what people are saying. And if you're not ready, like sometimes people say about me stuff, like Serena were reading about. Lo loads of like there's loads of women because don't forget like there's a big feminist movement right there yeah which i'm i'm all of, i'm all for feminism yeah. i love i, I I've got but they try to find like little no, but, things yeah, like don't forget there's three women i grew up with so my mom my two sisters yeah my dad passed away 10 years ago yeah yeah I'm sorry about that. that's three no don't worry about it it's cool like, same with you is isn't it it makes us who we are yeah. so the, the three women in my house like i'm, I'm a feminist like serena you are. look I, I would give up my whole life and support Serena. Yeah, you would. And he would, yeah. And the thing is, the people that... would have been less of a man. But then there's people at home, sorry. I'm going to keep going on this one. There's people at home that would be like, oh, we're fucking like this, that, and the other. Like, talking about me on comments. And I'd be like... I know, I know. We talked about this just like a week ago. But you know what it is, is your podcast doesn't give away on who you guys are. Of course So not. anybody that's commenting from small, like, videos like that, really don't know you like like we hang out with you guys right like we have a relationship outside of this whole thing yeah, yeah. and i feel like that's a whole different vibe like yeah, yeah. you get to see d and serena who they really are and <laughs> i don't think you guys work without each other oh, oh my god, god. no and way congratulations on your guys wedding thank you that's gonna be so amazing i wish i could come but i know i'll be a little busy but it's I'll okay. be there. We'll do spirit. a Lordy party or something. We'll do a yeah. live. We'll, do a live. we'll, we'll meet in India again next year in Lordy yeah. time. Yeah, we'll do a Lordy party here. That'd be cool. Epic. That'd be cool. That would be so epic. We'll have to do a live stream for you. Yeah. yeah. We'll have, we'll have like a little cardboard cut out of you. <laughs> you, know, you know, your and your husband. Your eyes will be little cameras. I'm here. No, but it's going to be beautiful and I can't wait. And I hope you have a lot of luck shopping because shopping is crazy here. But Thank you. Billy got your back, I think. Yeah, 100%. Aww. Goodney, thank you so much for coming on to our podcast. Yeah. You've been so good to have on. Just I'm like sure people oh. have been enlightened by by you. I know, okay. so called. Even fucking... if they're not, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, but thank you. But you some are. people will watch just to pay anyway. I know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope they enjoyed it anyway. Thank you guys for having me. I had a great time. I was very nervous in the beginning, but yeah. look, I'm comfortable now. She's living her best life. What job when you was there? Talking yeah, and then it. my legs started sleeping, so I was like, let me get back up again. I'm not going to lie, this Munjo not the most comfortable. I can't no, wait to get up after not. this. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause to our guests. Oh, 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 thanks. <laughs>